We're going to start with the countdown to the shutdown set to begin at the end of the day tomorrow. We're going to have the very latest on that heated fight in Washington over whether the government stays open. Yeah, then we're going to take you inside the high stakes hearing in Britney Spears' battle to win back control of her life and her career. Plus, we had a fun conversation with Jon Stewart mm -hmm. after six long years away from TV. He's back. We talked about how he's been changed by his time out of the spotlight, and you may be surprised at the little talent he's picked up, a new hobby. I don't think his wife likes it, so there's that. <laughs> and it's Wednesday, so that means it's Trends Day. We're breaking down all the hot topics for you. So should we hit play? Let's hit it. Time it's for Today, Today in 30. 30. We'll start at the White House. NBC's Peter Alexander at his post. Peter, good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. President Biden abruptly postponing a vaccination-themed trip to Chicago today to stay right here in Washington and to try to iron out those intensifying divisions within his own party that now threaten to derail his signature policy proposals. And at the same time, the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, in the most blunt terms yet, told Congress if they do not raise or suspend the nation's credit card limit, the consequences for the country will be catastrophic. This morning, an urgent deadline. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warning Congress that if it doesn't resolve its stalemate, the U.S. will be unable to pay its debts by October 18th. America would default for the first time in history, and our country would likely face a financial crisis and economic re recession. While Democrats and Republicans battle over a pair of fiscal crises, funding the government beyond Thursday and raising the debt ceiling by next month, Yellen's imploring them to work together to avoid economic catastrophe. And it would be a self-inflicted wound of enormous proportions. That possible government shutdown under 48 hours away, threatening to furlough hundreds of thousands of federal workers in the middle of a pandemic. Senate Republicans blocking bills to address the two fiscal threats, saying Democrats are trying to spend too much money. Democrats will not get bipartisan help borrowing money so they can immediately blow historic sums on a partisan taxing and spending spree. It comes as President Biden and top Democrats are trying to unite feuding wings of their party to pass both the trillion-dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill and a much larger plan that would invest trillions more into health care, education, and climate programs. Progressives like Bernie Sanders saying Democrats either pass both laws or they'll block the bipartisan bill. Moderates huddling with the president Tuesday say that's the wrong approach. Holding one hostage over the other is not fair. They want the bigger plan scaled down, but it's filled with presidential priorities, including free pre-K and community college, extended child tax credits, meaning a middle-class family with two kids under six would receive up to $500 a month, and it would allow Medicare to negotiate lower drug prices for seniors. And the White House says that plan will be paid for by tax increases on the wealthy and on corporations, but Republicans argue it'll fuel inflation and wreck the economy. Savannah? Let's talk about this debt ceiling. The Treasury Secretary warned about a catastrophe if the debt ceiling is not lifted. And, and that will affect every single American, won't it, Peter? Yeah, that's right. She laid out a laundry list of the potential impacts, the consequences here, saying that nearly 50 million seniors, for example, could see their Social Security payments delayed. Service members in this country would not know when their next paycheck was coming. Ultimately, she says interest rates on credit cards and car loans and mortgages would all rise, meaning that you would end up paying more. And Savannah, on top of all of it, she says unemployment would go up. All right, Peter, thank you very much. It is the start of a highly anticipated day for Britney Spears. In fact, some of her fans are calling this day B-Day. It's a long-awaited hearing that's being held this afternoon in Los Angeles. It could have major implications on her conservatorship and her life. In a moment, we'll talk to the director of a new Netflix documentary that explores this case. But first, NBC's Erin McLaughlin has the latest. Erin, good morning. Good morning, guys. While the fate of Britney Spears rests with a judge in the courthouse behind me, it certainly appears as though the conservatorship, which has controlled her life and finances for more than a decade, might soon be brought to an end, giving new hope to her fans and supporters that the Free Britney movement might soon become a reality. This morning, Britney Spears' court battle is reaching a crescendo. Today is hearing the latest and potentially most crucial milestone in the long legal journey to free the singer from a 13-year conservatorship, led by her father, Jamie. 
Earlier this month, her father filed a petition to finally end the conservatorship, an unexpected turn after controlling his daughter's life and her $60 million fortune for more than a decade, fighting in recent months to remain in charge. A judge could remove Jamie today. Brittany's legal team requesting CPA John Zabel take his place temporarily. But in new court filings, Jamie is raising concerns over the potential new conservator. Jamie still seems obstinate in his final moments as her conservator. This is my mom right here. Earlier this year, a New York Times documentary reignited interest in the star's well-being. A follow-up to that documentary released over the weekend, detailing allegations that Jamie Spears and his team surveilled Britney for years, bugging her room and mirroring her cell phone, even monitoring conversations with her lawyers. Don explained to me that Britney's communication is monitored for her own, you know, security and protection. The security company in charge of Britney did not respond to NBC's request for comment, but their lawyer told the New York Times they are particularly proud of their work in keeping Ms. Spears safe for many years. A lawyer for Jamie Spears responded to the allegations, writing in part, all of his actions were well within the parameters of the authority conferred upon him by the court. A day ahead of today's hearing, streaming giant Netflix released Britney versus Spears. There's other people that have tried to help. They've paid a heavy price. She is limited on how she can voice her wishes. I just want my life back. And it's been 13 years and it's enough. The documentary examining how the conservatorship was established and raising questions as to why it's still in place. I've represented dozens of conservatees in court. Not one of them has ever had a job. Brittany was not involved in the making of any of the films, but wrote on Instagram she watched a little bit of one recent doc. Brittany and her supporters hoping the end of her conservatorship will bring in new beginnings. And this morning, Jamie Spears releasing a statement saying that he loves Britney unwaveringly and only wants the best for her. Meanwhile, legal experts are saying that they do not believe that Britney will emerge from today's hearing a free woman. However, they do expect this to be a step in that direction and that the conservatorship could be ended in a matter of months. Savannah. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. Stick around because there's much more coming up on Today in 30. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. Hard to believe it's been six years and what feels like, I mean, millions of news cycles <laughs> since Jon Stewart signed off from The Daily Show. And ever since, fans have been waiting anxiously for his return to TV. Good news, guys. The wait is over. Tomorrow, Jon Stewart is back with a new show. He's taking on some very serious issues facing the country. But before its debut, Savannah, you got to sit down and chat with him exclusively. It Pretty was cool. really fun to catch up with him. And we had a good conversation about this new show, how it is different from The Daily Show and life off the air, including a new hobby of his that has the family encouraging John to leave home just a little bit more. <laughs> Welcome to The Daily Show. For 16 years, Jon Stewart's Daily Show was nightly must-see viewing. Why can we still breathe? That's what I'm asking. 
But now, after a six-year hiatus... I've been away from television for some time. This is what I look like now. He's back on television. A new show on Apple TV Plus called The Problem with Jon Stewart. More casual look, more serious feel. Well, it's not The Daily Show. It's, no. it's the bi-weekly show. Is bi-weekly mean twice a week or twice a month? I'm on dictionary.com. We're doing like 80 year. Okay. And I guess there's no real terminology for that. This is an octannual program. The octannual show. That um, was the original title actually was <laughs> the octannual show. Each episode takes a deep dive into one problem facing the country. We support our troops unless they actually need support. Stewart with an audience once again. How did it feel to be back in front of an audience? Uh, because of the COVID, I, I still like, I'm still not very pleased like when anybody exhales. Like I just sort of thought like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this like free diving. We're gonna go into the studio. We're gonna hold our breath for as long as we can hold it. And then we're out of there. I, I thought watching it, it's funny. It, it'll make you laugh, but it also might make you cry. Oh, well that, hold on a second. I'm, I'm gonna you. use that on the, that's going, that's going right on the magazine head, Savannah. That's, I'm gonna put that in quotes. Savannah Gutter, today's show, it'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, it'll make you try and figure out how to subscribe to Apple TV+. Plus. <laughs> Maybe I miss my career in marketing. Yes, <laughs> I think that's exactly right. You're the blurb queen. Blurb. She can okay. blurb it like nobody blurbs it. I lettered in blurbing. <laughs> it was my minor in college. Sure, sure. What I'm trying to say is there's a lot of it that feels like The Daily Show, mm -hmm. but it also is going a lot deeper. If another country was doing what we allowed to be done to our veterans, it'd be at war already. Should I vote for you now? And I don't mean deeper into the controversy. You're going deeper into the substance. Well, I hope so. I think The Daily Show felt like doing the weather. You know, uh, like the Today Show, like you're in there every day, man. You make your bones on volume. Like no matter what, you're there. And it felt to me maybe a chance to step back for a second and maybe look at the system. How is the system incentivized that's creating this corrupt end game that, that we seem to be trapped in? Was there any part of you that decided to come back to TV because of anything that's happened in the last five years where you felt like, I am dying to get this off my chest. Not really. I feel like I get to get things off my chest all the time. I have children. I get to, I, I get to <laughs> unburden myself at breakfast and dinner almost every day. Uh, <laughs> it was not one of those things where I thought, I need an outlet. This idea that I had was the first time I felt like, oh, that, that feels like an evolution to me that makes sense. And so that's, I think that was more the motivation of it. And also the, the children and, and Tracy have had enough of me. I think that was a lot of it as well. They actually wanted it to be more than Octannual. They felt like, why don't you do two shows a day? How about 24 hour cable? 24 hour cable, host the whole thing. You do something in the show that you didn't ever do at The Daily Show, which is you went out in the field and actually conducted an interview. Yes. One on one. Yes. It wasn't humorous. And no. the first interview you did was with our Veterans Affairs Secretary, member of cabinet. It was tense. You're saying burning everything with jet fuel might not be the answer. As soon as I was out there, I was like, oh my God, is this what the correspondents had to do? This is awful. I don't like this at all. Yeah, you're just sitting there in a room and there's no audience. And you're like, hey, I think this guy might be getting mad at me. Does that mean you're going to be nicer to the media in, in this new show? No. <laughs> John Stewart has said he wants to reduce the noise in politics and media. But at home, different story. You've gotten a new talent. First of all, very kind of you to say a new talent. Uh, I didn't say you were talented. I have I said, a new, let, let's say this, haven't. I have a new behavioral tick involving <laughs> uh, drumsticks. How does the family feel about your drum playing? Imagine you're living with an older gentleman who <laughs> won't stop doing this. Annoying. I'm generally annoying because I like to talk a lot. And then when you add tapping, 
that just that that elevates it to an entirely new scale of oh my god when do i get to go to college <laughs> i read you felt like being away from that daily grind you said that life got richer and more colorful and i liked that it feels like one of those videos where the guy puts on the glasses for the first time and sees colors where you're just like oh, <laughs> i had no idea that all this was going on even to the point of just being able to pick the kids up from school, you know, driving them home and listen to the conversation in the back where they don't, aren't as aware of you're in there. It's so much more revelatory and, and lovely. And I think that informed how I went back to doing another television show. I, I believe they refer to it as balance. I was just about to say, Jon Stewart sounds like you have it all. Uh, what? I Ding! <laughs> looking for a good little ending. How do you like that as an ending? It's it's nice. <laughs> it's perfect. What a I have missed him. I know. I, I have missed John Stewart. Yeah. It's, it's so many people are looking forward to hearing from him again and his take on everything that's going on. Um, so it starts Thursday. What we'll kind premiere. of topics does he tackle? Oh, they're serious topics. Yeah. Um, the first one has to do with those military burn pits mm -hmm. and the toxic exposures. Mm -hmm. he, he deals with the issue in a very sort yeah. of John so, Stewart way, but then yeah. he dives deep into wow. it. One's on freedom and wow. what, what freedom means in terms of masks and vaccines. And wow. Yeah, so he... he he takes on some hard topics, does cool. some tough interviews, mm -hmm. too. You can see more of our conversation tonight on Nightly News. The full interview is on today all day. And once again, The Problem with Jon Stewart premieres tomorrow on Apple TV+. Plus. You're going to like this boost. It's a good surprise. So Carla DuPont is a writer who lives in Atlanta. Her best friend really wanted to surprise Carla for her birthday this month. So she secretly had Carla's brother, Carl, flown in from Baltimore, where he's a singer and a college voice teacher. Then she took Carla for a walk, hoping that she wouldn't catch on, that something was up. Just stand against the wall, sweetie. Sarah, take a picture. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about that for a reunion? How about that? So Carla and Carl, uh, Carl are so busy with their projects, they don't get enough time together, and that's why you need a friend. A friend to say, I'm going to make it happen. I that's just right. love the side eye she gives him in that split second right, before like, she recognizes him, like, who's this creep? <laughs> right. oh, it's Sweet. your brother. I love that. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts.
We want to take a turn to something that's really exciting for us here. We're going to bring back Mr. Rooker and tell us all about it. Al, we're going to show him how the sausage is made. <laughs> yes, we are. And who doesn't like sausage, okay? It really is cool uh, because we're, we're always amazed at, at what our staff pulls off every morning uh, during our show for the four hours of today. And now we're going to go behind the scenes to show you how they do it with a new half hour show called The Making of Today. On the episode, we're going to give you a tour of Studio 1A that you see on TV every day. But I'm going to reveal some secrets of the set you may not know. We're also going to show you how we went to not one, not two, but three Broadway show openings and how we were able to turn that around for you to watch at home the very next morning. And Chanel will take us behind the curtain, how she got glammed up for the Met Gala and introduce you to her glam squad for that very day. It's all going to be streaming on Today All Day. Now, if you need help finding it, check out Peacock or go to today.com slash all day. I also uh, take you behind the scenes of my zero G gravity flight, all that and more. Very exciting. Yeah, so that was I hope awesome. you'll tune in. Yeah, I, th I don't think people realize how much goes into each. And uh, congratulations to Ali, who oversees the show as yes. well, who, yes, who so came Ali up Markowitz. with this. Yeah, so Marco really Polo. awesome. Al, thank you. Okay, guys. We'll see you back tomorrow. And yes, and of course, Missy from yes, um, Missy Dunlop. today. It's in Missy Dunlap from today all day. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from the ground zero as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, a taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been drowned. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get a hit. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, it's that time of the week when we get the real scoop behind the big trends and celebrity stories. You've been waiting for this. I do. You? you know I love Trends Day Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm a huge fan of the show. I'm so happy to be first time caller. No, um, <laughs> here with our daily pop news we can use, our friend Justin Sylvester. Justin, we hear you have something big for us. You yeah. guys, what? I have the absolute biggest, juiciest scoop. You are never going to believe it is going to knock your socks off. Are you ready? Ready. Let's go. Yes. 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 What? Ah! <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, OMG, are you dying? Oh, I'm dying. Are you dying? <laughs> You're here? I am here. I mean, I am amazing. here. Oh my God, finally. Who <laughs> Wait a minute, you're uh, here. Shocked. By the way, I'm so happy to be here, but I'm much happier that I got the Oprah. I got the Oprah <laughs> shocked. Like, you're here, Oprah, you are here. You get it, Justin. Yeah. You get it, Justin. Yes. Oh, okay. Whoa. This is so this crazy. Is crazy. 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 You, I don't know. Did I you know? know. No, no you really, you I did not see that coming. Once I heard about the Emmy, I just had to fly no, in. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you were like, wait, Jenna's not even there? Let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so talk to us. This is a big story about Will Smith. We're dying to know the details. You guys, Give Will it. Smith just revealed that he and Jada Pinkett Smith are in an open relationship. This comes <laughs> years after speculation. It's been on everybody's radar. Yeah. There have been rumors this Did whole time. Can you explain what that meant? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> he Asking said for a friend. Yeah. that his wife was never a conventional marriage kind of girl. She never believed in conventional marriage. Now, he kept a few things. 
you know, to his heart, but this is pretty open for a celebrity A-list couple. Yes. So why would he do this now? I mean, if that's been going on for a long time, what made him speak up? You know, I think two reasons. Okay. One, society is more open to yeah. unconventional marriages now. Two. And two, don't forget that August Alcina entanglement happened last year, and they talked about it on Red Table Talk, and I think the uh, response was mm. so positive that he was like, you know what? It's GQ. Brad Pitt got open with GQ. Jonah Hill did the same thing. Yeah. I'm Will Smith. This it's time. It. Are you, you know sitting me? here right now? I am <laughs> dying. Okay, just, just double checking. <laughs> So we know about Kim K at the Met Gala was she really made a statement, but now this thing is carrying over. It's not over. There's it's her. not over. Look at that. And by the wow. way, you could look like that for a hundred dollars. I cannot believe I am saying this, but the Kim K Met Gala costume is on sale right now. Unfortunately, it for Halloween. For Halloween, <laughs> okay. but unfortunately, it doesn't come with the ten thousand dollar ponytail oh. or the bank account. Okay. But is that but a hundred dollars to just could you just wear like a sheet or a, a yeah, garbage yeah. bag? Yeah, yeah, yes. for you could totally do it. You could totally wear a garbage bag. Or a panty hose, because I think you want to see. <laughs> you want to be yes. able to see. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, what are some other celebrity inspired well, costumes that we might be seeing? Because it's it's almost October. It's, it's almost time. October. But yeah. if you remember all of these big fashion moments that yeah. hit the red carpet, you remember J Lo in that Versace gown oh, yeah, that yeah, keeps yeah, coming yeah, back yeah, every yeah, five yeah. years. Yeah. Miley Cyrus and the phone oh, yes, finger. Yes, yes. That made a big oh, yeah, the phone one. Finger. So we're going to start seeing the, some of that these. The That's the me there? dress. I forgot about I forgot that. The dress. Those were amazing Halloween costumes. Even celebrities were dressing like celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, remember some of these guys, yeah, made it. Yeah. Some of these made uh, some moments during our Halloween shows, too. Okay. So Angelina Jolie in the weekend. Oh, my God. Are the they dating? Is this what's happening? Okay. We don't understand. Are they? Is this a relationship? Are they friends? Is that a stupid question to ask? No, no. no not at all. Not at all. Because I had the same question. Okay. I know somebody who's close to Angelina, and he told me that they were seeing each other in humanitarian effort conversations. But what, does that mean? what does that mean? Like no, they no, were, no, they were, like down. she was helping him with humanitarian efforts. Okay. He wanted to get more into charity, so and they friends? met the first time friends. But they went to the same restaurant twice in less than two months. Giorgio Baldi is kind of one of those restaurants where you start talking about business, but it definitely leads to romance. Ooh, is that the in truffle, L.A.? That's in L.A., okay. right on Cannon Drive. So I think these two may be a couple. And if you listen to his last album, yeah, what, what, yeah. he dropped a little line about Angelina Jolie that he liked her lips in his song, Party Monster. Really? So I think The Weeknd might just be trying to get in with Angelina. And he just bought a $70 million house in Bel Air with 13 rooms. Wait. Room for all her kids. Wow. $70 million. You're now you're, you're already marrying them. You're I'll like, marry you're gonna them. marry them, you're uh, gonna go move in. She moves quick. Wow, and now is that restaurant like a place where you go to be seen? Yeah. What like, do you spot? think they don't mind It's a knowing? very low lit romantic spot that uh, if you're gonna bring somebody there, I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be a it's ring. It's romance? It's romance. What do you mean ring? Wow. There's gonna be a ring. Oh, well, you just jumped, did you just see what he just did? Yeah. He jumped way ahead. He did. I'm calling it. Okay, all right, well good, save the tape. <laughs> Look, are you so excited? Justin, I'm just so delighted that you're here. You, by we the are. way, you are effervescent on the screen, but you're ten uh, times yeah. more so we in need real to hear. life. We should I do. am dying to come to New York. I love <laughs> yes. what you guys are doing. I'm loving the blurbs, Savannah. Oh, I'm John Stewart. I'm everybody's like, talking blurb. about the blurbs. How did that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> blurbing. Thing. Yeah, mm. I want to be here. This place, New York, is phenomenal. Yeah. The yeah. energy is here. Yeah. I want to be here. We have romantic right. restaurants too. I'm you know? done. Yeah. So come on, let's yeah. go. You can catch this guy right here weekdays on Daily Pop, our sister network, E. Oh, Guys, what did you think of Justin surprising you? I was shocked. I just heard the door shocked. roll and I was Well, like, I heard what? you say the first thing up is a big surprise and I was oh, like, oh, oh. it's going to be good to see you. I thought it was going to be Angelina yeah, in the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> How did it you feel? A lot to ask, but would you? I'm like, don't even yes. get interested in it. Yes. I take the space, I talk straight here oh, in the morning. I'm so happy. You're I am here whenever you guys come. Uh, is that gonna save tomorrow? As well, you're here. We should. You know what? Day. We should. Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday. We hope you'll come back with us for another great morning tomorrow on today. Bobby Flay is mm. going to be here whipping up some recipes from his new cookbook. And then Keenan Thompson, he'll stop by. He's going to give us the lowdown on the new season of SNL. So we hope you all have a great day. We will see you mañana.
Hey, gang, and welcome to Today All Day. I've had a chance to interview so many amazing people here at Today, and I'm very excited to share some of my favorite interviews with you. And over the next 30 minutes, you'll see stories on mental health, music, and a whole lot more. I hope you enjoy and maybe even learn a little something along the way. I think a lot of people from the outside think that people begin down the path that eventually leads them to an eating disorder because they are vain, they are worried about what they look like. And for me, it was never really about weight. It was a way to exert control in my world when my world felt very out of control. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. And this series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. You know, eating disorders is such a varied experience. And I wondered if you could sort of describe yours and, and tell me, you know, a little bit about the history of it. It was very much about avoiding eating whenever possible. Again, not out of a calorie restriction, weight loss goal, but a uh -huh. control thing. I was diagnosed with leukemia when I was four and with chronic pain when I was 12. My body felt like my enemy from a very early age. And so the thing I wanted to control most was my body. I remember thinking like, this is the only thing that's gonna get me through day to day. And also this is probably the thing that's gonna kill me. But at the time that felt okay. Going away to college made things a lot worse. And it was in college, my sophomore year, that I sort of hit what I think of as my rock bottom. I can remember the exact moment I was in a restaurant on Valentine's Day with my then boyfriend and now husband. And we got there and they informed us that it was a four course meal and they were not doing anything less than that. And I sat at the table on Valentine's Day sobbing in a restaurant. And that was for me when I sort of really decided like this is not how I want to live my life. Like what did you do in the, in the restaurant? What did you say to your then boyfriend? He sort of reached across the table and held my hand and said, whatever you can do in this meal today is, is okay. And we're gonna get through this meal together and we're gonna fix this. We're gonna figure out how to get you the support that you need so that you don't have to continue to feel this way. Teresa sought help and joined a meal support group at Rock Recovery in Arlington, Virginia. Led by a therapist, the group meets once a week to eat together and discuss the feelings that come up at mealtime. One of the hardest things about an eating disorder is it cuts you off from your community and it keeps you from living your life fully. So our programs are all designed to model full community and people kind of coming back to the table, breaking bread with people that they love. In the supportive comfort of the group, you are able to tackle something that you couldn't do on your own. You're able to have that meal really make an accomplishment and, and prove to yourself that you can do something really hard and do that week over week and process those emotions in a group of folks who understand you. And hopefully that moves you forward into being able to do that in the, not, you know, in the real world by yourself. Teresa, when you're in these meal support groups, like what specifically happens? What tools do you get to walk out and kind of you know, utilize in, in uh, you know, the outside world? For someone with an eating disorder, you, you get such a distorted view of what's appropriate and what your body really needs. And so having guidance around that. And secondly, it's practicing talking back to your eating disorder voice. You're able to practice and build sort of mantras that you can say back to that voice that you can then practice when you're out in the real world and really struggling with a meal. Since 2008, Rock Recovery has helped over 400 men and women across the country. Stacia, who wants to keep her last name confidential, struggled with binge eating before seeking treatment and joining a meal support group. We had Chinese food the first time. I remember thinking, okay, this is, this is weird. We're sitting in this group and we're eating this, this food that I would never order for myself because I have all these rules in my head. I was looking back through my notebook from my year in that group. I choke up every time I see this. Just says that gradually you will return to yourself. That idea of just gradually returning is it's just really beautiful. It was very powerful. So by the end of that year, I, I could say I was symptom free, I was recovered, um, and have been able to continue using those tools ever since. Rock Recovery pivoted to virtual programming when COVID hit. 
the center saw a 420% increase in people reaching out for help, including 24-year-old Katherine Thompson. Realizing when food and exercise take up 97% of your headspace on every given day, that is when you realize you have an eating disorder. They helped me so much. I think just joining on that first night and finally feeling like I could just like put my shoulders down. It's just really freeing knowing that you're not the only one and having people to hold you accountable. Teresa Green graduated from her treatment program nearly a decade ago and considers herself fully recovered. We all have to eat. So what is the relationship you now have with, you know, your sort of three squares, if you will? Yeah, it's it's night and day. Um, I remember when I first entered treatment, my goal was just to get to a point where I could sit down every day and eat what I needed to, but I didn't think that I would ever be free of the negative thoughts that drove me to engage in the behaviors. I never thought I would enjoy food or like it. And that's not true. Like I really consider myself recovered. I love cooking with my family. The idea of a four course meal now is like an exciting thing that I would love to do with my husband. It is not a terrifying awesome. situation. Since gaining control over her eating disorder, Teresa has volunteered by mentoring others at Rock Recovery, encouraging them through a journey she's been on firsthand. It's been one of the more meaningful things in my life, and I just felt very inspired to help show other people who were in the same place I had been that this was possible because I really right. didn't believe it was when I was in that position. Do you think they believe you? I think they, I think they do. I think they often believe that it can happen for other people and not themselves. But even the idea that it can happen for other people is powerful. For them, it presents an example of what they could achieve and what they're working for. And for me, it brings meaning to the struggle to be able to give back and help other people. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from Ground Zero, as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been dropped. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get a hit. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Having been vaguely suicidal in various stages of my life for almost my entire life, I've struggled with like depression and anxiety and panic in varying degrees. Sometimes music is your soundtrack when you need to wallow, and sometimes music becomes this communal experience that for me has reminded me of what's worth sticking around for when that's been a question. You cite music and your love of music as being perhaps one saving thought for you, the idea of not hearing the great song again. There are songs that, that I now love that remind me of feeling really, really strong in an otherwise really, really difficult situation. You know, for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. I think I've been depressed probably my entire life. I struggled for, I don't know, it feels really funny to use the past tense, it feels disingenuous. I struggle still with the question of suicide because it's something that I, I don't know, was more acute in my life before. I definitely attempted. When it got worse was when I went into the hospital. It's like three years ago. You put yourself in the hospital? 
Yeah, I did. I was I was getting really, really close to doing something very, very dangerous, and I leaned. I just changed my mind at the last minute. I spent two months in the psych ward. I, I know, actually, without that, I might not be here talking to you, or I might have a very different story to tell. How's music impacted your sort of mental health? Uh, music has been pretty central to, I think, like my, I think, like recovery process, and and also just processing having. I think various diagnoses. I've had a PTSD diagnosis for a long time. It can really alter your memory and, and the way that memory functions. And so music ends up being this way that I can kind of bookmark periods in my life that are otherwise kind of hard to access. Right, right, it's like a trigger. When you hear something, it kind of fills the gap your brain won't otherwise recall. Yeah, it can take you back to a place that's harder to visit. Mm -hmm. And it also, I think it's, it's worked in like the opposite way too, where it's taken me back to places that were maybe joyful that I had forgotten about until I heard a certain song. For me, I think I was dealing with a lot of really overwhelming emotions just due to various instabilities and the music affords you this external expression of like rage that you can't equivocate. And it sort of makes what you're, what's in your body already feel a little bit more true when you hear it yeah. from this outside source. So how did you get involved with the Sounds of Saving? One of the co-founders, Charlie Gross, but I actually met him um, in my outpatient treatment that was directly after my hospitalization. We started working on a few photo projects together and when he and uh, Nick, the other co-founder of Sounds of Saving got together and started putting together events, they asked me to be a part of it. I love the idea of using music as a way to connect and to relay messages of hope. Um, and that's what SOS was founded on, creating videos of uh, artists telling their own personal stories of their mental health struggles and playing a song that helped them through something. So it's like the medium is the message. Having a, a musical component, but then also having a discussion about the things that are coming out of the music. Um, so we had this idea of um, calling them feedback sessions. I think that what's been really great about these events is that it does really foster a sense of community. Sort of speak out loud in front of a crowd about it and then to have other people share with me that they were dealing with similar things. It, it made me kind of feel, um, I think just validated in knowing that this is something that other people struggle with as well. It bothers me that there's like young people out there that think that that is the sort of precursor of footprint to great lyrics in a song or photography or artistry or writing. You don't have to be uh, miserable to be a great artist. It goes back to this idea maybe that your mental illness is the entirety of who you are. And in reality, your depression is like one very small part of what makes you who you are. Like you, you will not be a different, less interesting person if you go to therapy and if you figure out how to make life a little bit easier for yourself. All of the things that you were making art about before, they might change, but you're still you. You'll still be able to create. You just gotta trust. And what is the relationship between writing poetry and your sort of mental health and wellness journey? There's a lot that I write about depression and about, as you say, like feeling like you have a broken brain. Now I'm afraid of everything and everyone looks at me. I don't know who I am except when I'm hiding. Your story and these stories of the mental health plight are so powerful. You are a freaking superhero to me. Like, I think those of us <laughs> that struggle with mental health on any level. To me, uh, it's a badge of honor and it's like my superpower. Like I have a superpower. I think like one of the things that made things a little bit easier to deal with, like I'm gonna have PTSD my whole life. Depression, recovery from it is completely nonlinear and I can't pretend that I won't be there again. Knowing that it's something that is being like more discussed right now and is being more prioritized in the public conversation gives me a lot of hope. It's okay to not be okay. What do you say to somebody who's just having a tough go at things right now? I would say that reaching out to whoever you possibly can is really important. As much as it might seem impossible to ask for help or you don't, you don't, you know, you might feel as though you're being burdensome. I can guarantee no one is anyone else's burden. We all exist to help each other and to, to get each other through. I think also just seeing if you can get through the next five minutes. It becomes really tempting to try to answer these grand questions about what is worth living for and, and why should I try? And 
you know, I don't really have any good answers for that because I've asked yeah. myself those questions, but usually getting through the next five minutes or the next 30 seconds even um, will bring me to another moment where I'm not asking that question because I don't feel as much as though I need, to, like, I don't feel like I need to answer it. You've decided to go back to school to become a therapist. Is that true? That is, yeah. I was thinking a lot about once this is all over, where do I want to apply my energy to sort of be of, I think, like the most use to my community. I've always really enjoyed speaking to other people. And I, I, I mean, like, you know, right now, this is like a really, really great conversation. I love, I go, talk about mental health all day long. Dude, me too. I'm telling you, you are going to be my therapist. Listen, you're first on the list. I mean, you're going to be so good at it. You're so easy to talk to. And you talk about this stuff in a way that I want the world to hear it. And you have so many tools you can share with people. You're going to be a killer therapist. Thank you. I really hope that's true. Sometimes I get like bogged down thinking about where all this time spent in this depressed state has gotten me. And one way to sort of alchemize it has been writing poetry. And I feel like another way to alchemize it might be just sort of using it to, to help other people if I can. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from the ground zero as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been proud. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get a hand. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Morgan Neville's captured the essence of popular figures like Mr. Rogers. He did the film Won't You Be My Neighbor, Frank Sinatra, Keith Richards. He also won an Oscar for the movie 20 Feet from Stardom, one of my favorite about background singers in music. But in Roadrunner, he takes a closer look at the storyteller who traded in his kitchen knife for a passport and took us all along for the ride. Hey, what's up, man? It's one final trip around the world with TV's favorite traveler. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. Roadrunner, a film about Anthony Bourdain, follows the cook turned author turned television adventurer. From his early days in a Manhattan kitchen. Let me take you on a notional joyride through our menu tonight. To his last ones in France, where he died by suicide in 2018. Our friend. Anthony Bourdain has died. Why do you think people loved Anthony Bourdain? Because he was authentic. I mean, he was he was himself, and I think everybody felt like they knew him. Weird that it's people of all ages, different generations, different ideologies. Yeah, I mean, he's like a Johnny Cash type figure, somebody who appeals totally. to, you know, evangelicals and punk rockers and everybody in between. Oscar-winning director Morgan Neville sat down with Bourdain's TV collaborators and personal confidants filling Roadrunner with more than just tributes, but raw truth-telling. There was definitely a kind of Friends of Tony crew of people who, particularly in the wake of his suicide, have all kind of found each other and reach out to each other for support. In watching your film, 
it's sort of glaring how many references he made to, to taking his own life, even specifically hanging himself. How, how dark was he? Oh, pitch black. <laughs> I mean, Tony had a black sense of humor. Um, and, you know, we have a couple of examples in the film about him joking about suicide. There were many, many more examples. And he wrote about it too, but I think people decide, oh, that's just Tony. But obviously there was something underneath all that too. Right. Tony was always dancing on the edge. And I think that's where he got his creative juice, you know, but it's also where the darkness lay. I'm gonna watch you and I'm gonna do what you do. Bourdain dealt with addiction, depression, and mental health issues throughout his life. The film explores how those at times fueled his sense of wanderlust. There's so much talk in the film about how what a romantic he was. You know, he he loved to love, he loved to live. This is the path to true happiness and wisdom. How do you sort of rationalize his idea of romanticism and then ultimately what happened? You know, when he fell in love with somebody, it was like the first time you fall in love. When he went to some place, it was like, you know, the first time he'd ever traveled. Like he had this deeply romantic sense of, of the world. And, and that's part of what made him so great at what he did. And, but it's also untenable at a certain point. Not everything has to be so on the surface and so life and death. And Tony never got that. And the film showcases parts of Bourdain that his travel shows couldn't capture, like who he was as a father at home. What did you learn about Anthony Bourdain as a father through making this film? I mean, he loved being a father so much. When he was home and with his family, he was there 100%. And he loved devoting everything he could. But at the same time, you know, he traveled 250 days a year. and. I think there was something about that that made him feel like he couldn't be the kind of dad that that he expected. And and I think when he couldn't do that, that was something that just really ate at, ate at him in a, in a major way. Three years after his passing now, what void do you think Anthony Bourdain's passing has left us? It's huge, it's huge. I can't think of anybody who's shown more of the world to the rest of the world on television than Anthony Bourdain. And that that is so true. That is so valuable. He was an ambassador for curiosity. I think, you know, when you the, the big loss, so many of us will never get to go to these corners of the planet, you know, where yeah. Tony took us, right? And so we got to see these places through his eyes, which is in my opinion, some of the greatest sort of curator eyes. You know, yeah. he did the things, the street food, and talked to people. Yeah. It was never really about the food, right? It was always about the culture. He'd just be drinking yeah. beer going, people. what the hell's going on in this town? Yeah. What's going on in this country? What are the people like? Yep. And we all lived vicariously through that. And you spent some time with him, right? Well, you know, well, we'd go to his restaurant. You yeah. know, yeah. And he, was, you know, he, was, he was a bigger-than-life character, but you, you go and find out through a movie like this, you don't know what's going on. Right, and that he had, everything. yeah, he was a dad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all these things I felt like yeah. we learned for the first time. Yeah. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show. In a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> <laughs> to cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now I say that it shouldn't have to be called brave to talk openly about it. Like we should just be talking. We're never gonna end the stigma around mental illness until we put our names and faces on our stories. 
for a long time, I sort of suffered in silence. This series is trying to shine a light on these topics. There is no stigma to me. It's mine. 79 million people in the U.S. live with mental illness, to be exact. Yet when mania slaps me in the face so hard that I am left trembling in a corner, unable to slow down the hundreds of thoughts buzzing behind my eyes, I do feel like the only person in the world at that moment. And I wonder, will it ever stop? Jennifer Marshall wasn't always this brave. After experiencing back-to-back -back manic episodes in 2005, she was hospitalized and given a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Not long after that, she began writing a blog to help process the pain she felt. So Jennifer, I'm psyched to have you on Mind Matters. Let me just start with about 10 years ago when you started your blog. Why did you wanna start talking about your own sort of mental health? I needed an outlet. I needed to go somewhere and write regularly about what I was going through. It just helped me process things. When you started to talk about that in the blog, you did it anonymously, why? because I was afraid of what people might think of me putting all that out there. I was a little bit fearful of being discriminated upon. After a year and a half of blogging anonymously, Jennifer was offered an opportunity to write about her experiences for a major media outlet. And it was at that moment where I'm like, do I wanna just be a pen name or do I wanna own this story? And this is me and I wanna talk about it. Bipolar is a part of what makes up who I am. Then in 2013, she had a vision for staging a theatrical production where everyday people could tell their personal stories about mental health in front of a live audience. She decided to call it, This Is My Brave. This Is My Brave, where did that come from? The Sarah Brella song Brave was super popular at the time, it had just come out, top of the charts, you know, and I tweeted to her with my first public post and I said, Sarah, this is how big my brave is. And she retweeted me and I was like, oh my God, like this is amazing. Awesome, it is brave, it's so brave. Well, the funny thing is now I say that it shouldn't have to be called brave to talk openly about it. Like we should just be talking. This Is My Brave staged their first storytelling event in 2014 in Arlington, Virginia. A diagnosis is not a life sentence. What was wrong with me was not a flaw in character, but in chemistry. Since then, they've hosted 75 shows in 43 cities. And after that first show, what happened that made you go, okay, this was really good, I'm gonna build on this? This woman came up to me and she said, I found your blog in my darkest moment and your writing saved my life. And that's what the goal is, is to open up the conversation. During the pandemic, This Is My Brave hosted five virtual events and launched a special series focused on teens. Medarius Maximus. 18 year old rapper Medarius Maximus will be performing in This Is My Brave's upcoming national teen show. You look like an artist, man. I mean, I, I want to sign you just like, you got the like kind of like war. What's, what's, What's the deal with the, the war paint? I was raised in Native American culture. I'm Puerto Rican and African American. So I put it on every day because I won. I, I won the battle of waking up. Left wheelchair bound after a dirt bike accident when he was 14, Medarius has struggled off and on with depression. I just wanted to do this to inspire people. Show that if I can smile, then you can smile because most people in my position, you either fall flat or you get back up and try to fight another day. Jennifer has fought that same fight. In 2017, she had another manic episode following the sudden death of her creative partner and This Is My Brave co-founder, Anne-Marie Ames. This time, her kids were there to bear witness. The trauma of seeing their mom sick affected them and it came out in the form of anxiety for my daughter. We got her in with a private therapist and she went through five months of therapy and wrote a book called My Mommy's Mental Illness. That's a lot for young people to take in, but also part of what we're trying to do is create a new normal process. That's not special talk about mommy, that's just talk about mom. It's life. It's we, I think every person on this planet is gonna deal with some issue of their mental health at some time in their life. Literally, when I, we, we hang up with this Zoom, like I'll feel better. Mm -hmm. I don't even know you, but like, we're sort of like brother, sister in this, in this, this thing together. And like, just talking makes you feel better. Yeah.
Hi, today all day we've got a great show for you on this Wednesday morning. Let's kick it off with a little celebration as we get a first look at the newest member of our extended Today Show family. Check it out. We want to send congratulations to a member of our extended Today family. We all feel like aunties this yes. morning. Jenna's sister Barbara and her oh. husband Craig have welcomed a baby girl into their family. There she is, Cora Georgia Coyne. She was born Monday in Maine near the Bush family mm. home. And Sissy got right on a plane to go see yeah, her new little she niece. She was bursting. Uh, little Aunt Jenna talked about how Cora arrived a little bit early, but she says her niece is beautiful, precious, and feisty. Well, she's a Sounds Bush like girl. A Bush is yeah. definitely <laughs> feisty. In a statement, former President Bush said, quote, with full hearts, Laura and I are delighted to announce the birth of our new granddaughter, Cora is healthy and adorable, and we are proud and grateful. Yeah. Well, this is Barbara and Craig's first child. They were married back in 2019, and of course, we are sending them a lot of love and extra snuggles this morning. Mm. Little Cora. Dylan's baby. I know. It's a, a lot going on. Oh, baby boom. A lot, lot happening here. Coming up next on Today Talks, a look at things on the upside after this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. You accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back today on the third hour, the gang is looking at life on the upside. They shine a light on an organization making a difference in the lives of parents and babies. Check it out. And this morning in our series, The Upside, an organization making a difference in the lives of parents, especially babies. Yeah, Baby to Baby is a diaper bank and national nonprofit that distributes basic essentials for the last 10 years with the support from huge celebs like Gwyneth Paltrow, Kelly Rowland, and more. Baby to Baby has given out more than 200 million items to families in 150 cities. Just think of that number. Nora Weinstein and Kelly Sawyer Patrickoff are the co-CEOs. Good morning to both of you. We know diapers have always been a challenge. They're expensive. But can you talk about what this past year and a half has been like with the pandemic and then in some parts of the country, people have had horrible natural disasters like Hurricane Ida. How has that made things even tougher? Yeah, I mean, one in three families before the pandemic were choosing between food and diapers and we're struggling to afford diapers already. Diapers are so expensive. They're 14% of low-income families money goes wow. to buying diapers and they're the fourth highest expenditure after food, rent and utilities. So already families were struggling and the pandemic has just made it so much worse. Yeah, I, I know you guys, a, a million last year, two million over 10 years. I mean, this is, you've really taken it to scale. What was the impetus? How, how did we decide this was going to be the, the area where we made the difference? Well, the diapers, when we would go, when you speak to a low-income mom or dad, the first thing they say every time that they're struggling with is diapers. That's where they start. If they can't get a clean diaper on their child, they can't get the services that they need. And so, again, the statistic, one out of three families in this country struggling to afford them. And they're just simply, they're just so expensive. They're 70 to $80 per baby per month. And we had a baby to baby a requ request for 731 million diapers this year. Jeez. Wow. And being so expensive, you're working on manufacturing them, right? So to make them less expensive. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, we started, um, we're just about to start 
distributing the ones that we manufactured. We got, um, with our wholesale partners, we got them for six cents a diaper. We were able to take off the cartoon characters and the bells and whistles mm -hmm. and get them um, made for six cents, which generally retail, they're 35 to 67 cents a diaper. So wow. it's really a great price and we're gonna be able to distribute them to so many more families in need. No question, that's such a game changer to take something from 67 cents down to six sure. cents. You're also working not just to give the diapers out, but kind of behind the scenes with legislative actions. I could not believe that diapers are something that are taxed in a majority of our states still. We cannot believe it either. 35 <laughs> states still tax diapers as luxury items, oh my which they, any parent knows that they are certainly not. Um, we were successful. We worked with Governor Gavin Newsom in New York to repeal diaper tax that went into effect in January 2020, which was in opportune t timing in California. But there, we were the tenth state to make that happen, and and 35 to go because some states so already don't. just don't have sales tax on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it kind of makes you wonder why, why we've been taxing diapers in this country for so long. But I guess we tax lots of things. But, <laughs> um, but when do the diapers here in New York start to make their way out? Well, today we are hosting a diaper distribution in the city, and okay. we are going to be distributing the diapers, the baby-to-baby -baby diapers, um, to families in need. We have about a thousand families coming to our event, and um, it's going to be an amazing day. We're also distributing backpacks and groceries, and educational toys, and school supplies, and so much more. And we're here to hopefully make a difference in families recovering from COVID in New York. Oh, you, you Incredible! Are. Such a worthwhile. Mission. Thank you so much, Nora and Kelly, for being here with us. To read more about Baby to Baby or to figure out how you can get involved or help out, just go to our website, today.com. Keep it up. Great work. And we are back on a Wellness Wednesday. Our next guest has a new way to celebrate yourself every morning. Right. Amel Robbins is a motivational speaker, podcaster, and the best-selling <laughs> author behind the high five stage. The, behind the five second rule. <laughs> the new book is called The High Five Habit, and she's here to tell us what that means. Mel, good morning. Thank good you. Good morning. Number two on Amazon. That's so right. Congrats. Wow, congrats. Boom. So let's talk about this high five habit. In short, it's about cheering yourself on in all aspects of your life, yes. right? How, yes. Why is this so important? Well, first of all, the last 18 months, I think, has punched everybody in the face. We all have higher anxiety. We feel uh, discouraged. We feel low energy. And so you have to know how to pick yourself back up when something like this happens. You need more positive energy. And this goes deeper than just cheering for yourself. There is so much science behind high-fiving yourself in the mirror that is mind-blowing. Huh. I started doing this because I was overwhelmed by my life. I was overwhelmed during quarantine and I couldn't think of anything positive to say to myself mm -hmm. in the mirror. And one morning I just all of a sudden high-fived the exhausted, overwhelmed, tired woman I saw staring back at me and I felt this shift in energy. I did it for a month. I posted one photo online and more than a hundred people posted photos within an hour of themselves and with their kids of all ages, of all sizes, races, religions, doing it around the world. And I thought, well, that's crazy. Maybe I'm not the only one who needs to feel lifted up. So I did a year-long research project. The science is nuts, you guys. Mm. So let's talk about a high five. Okay. You yeah. high five people okay. your entire life. When you yep. high five somebody, what does a high five mean? You're saying, way to go. Yeah, Good job. Yep. Yes. You've never high five somebody and said, you're terrible, I hate you, you're a failure. That, right. That is it's true. a positive emotion, right. a positive gesture. All of that programming is in your brain. Ah. It's already there. So the physical cues the mental? Boom. Okay, And I so love that. you can stand in front of the mirror and say, my life is terrible, I'm a failure, I, I'm ashamed of this, that, and the other thing. When you go to high five your reflection, yeah. the subconscious part of your brain overrides what you're thinking. And it programs with your reflection. I believe in you. I that. see you. I love you. So just, so, and it's not. Just yeah, you got. You got to. You don't even have to touch the mirror. A lot of people don't. Okay. Just look at yourself in the mirror for a minute. Okay. Oh because 91% of women hate how they look. 50% wow. of men and women don't even look at themselves in the mirror. Wow. That's sad. Yeah, yeah. That is sad. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're actually staring at another human being. And everybody has a habit right now that is to pick apart or ignore the human being they see. Mm -hmm. it's true. I want you to break it. And so you just look at yourself and think, how do I need to show up for that human being? And then just raise your hand and high five your reflection. Honestly, you I feel it. I do. I know what you're talking about. And I will say I was just at a playground in Philadelphia with a bunch of kids and they were doing this like planned recess where 
every time you lost the game, right? Yeah. Like, so you're out, you get tagged, whatever. You high five the person, and the other one tells you, you're awesome. Even though you're out, it's just like an uplifting feeling. Well, you know why? Because every time somebody else gives you a high five, your brain releases dopamine. Mm. And your nervous system gives you a jolt of celebratory energy. This comes from Dr. Daniel Amen, the world's leading expert on the brain. On top of that, there's research about kids. The most motivating force in the world when researchers studied how to push kids through a challenge yeah. is not to tell them they're smart, not to tell them to work harder. It's to give them a high five with no words. Because when you high mm. five a human being, you're saying, I see you, I believe in you, I love you. That's what it's communicating. No, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to fist bump because no, it's the five. same reaction too. I'll have five. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, it's National Coffee Day. So grab your cup of joe and meet us on the other side. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back today on Hoda and Jenna. We're jumping for Java on National Coffee Day. Plus our newest pick for our Documentary of the Month Club. Check it out. Jenna's not here for a good reason. Yeah, we're gonna get to that in just a minute. It's a big, big day. Jenna is actually doing something for the very first time. Something she's never, she's done most things in her life, but this is something she's done for the very first time. Can we shout out these people? Say, oh, J oh, Jamie and Natalie. Oh, Jamie and Natalie, thank you for watching us. Yeah, that's their video. Y'all are super cute. Okay. Look at it. Adorable, love that doggy too. Okay, so Let's Jenna, yeah. she's anting. That's what she's doing for the first time. She's, she's got three kids of her own. She's never been an auntie, but now she is because lovely Barbara gave birth. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Barbara and her husband Craig welcome this little girl, mm. Cora Georgia Coyne. Now, is it Georgia because of George? I think. Is it I'm just George guessing. Bush? Is Georgia? it? Georgia, George. George is a big name in their family. Well, we yeah. should, yeah, Cora George. Isn't that cute, though? That's CGC. The, so it's Cora Coin. Yeah. And I actually do remember that I think Barbara said so she's Barbara Bush, two Bs, and her husband is Craig Coin, two, two Cs. Cs. I think they were into having a ah. CC, but I, Jenna will know. All right. Hey, Jenna, are you there? Hi, guys. Hi. Good morning. Oh, you have that voice that you have when there's a baby around. What are you doing? I was going to FaceTime y'all, but if you saw what I looked like, I said to Meredith, who's our producer, nobody wants to see this. I'm in sweatpants. I've already gone to Target and back twice. Um, <laughs> I am just so happy. Um, y'all are both aunts to nieces who I know you adore. <laughs> Well, I am now, too. Oh, how did that feel to hold that little baby? I mean, there was something almost evolutionary about it, because as y'all both know, my sister is 
I mean, we are inseparable. We have done all these things together. And the one thing that she hadn't done yet was to have a baby. And so I got to meet that precious little girl yesterday. I flew as soon as I could um, and got to hold her. And it was just one of those life moments I'll never forget. Oh, you're like, I mean, I'm a mess here. This is <laughs> so beautiful. If there's something about a little niece or nephew, I mean, you look and you're like, that. you look like family. Yeah. She's your yeah. family. I know, and you know what? It's like it's as y'all know. I mean, my, I have had three kids. She's my twin sister, and when we would write books and travel, people would always say to her, "Well, when are you going to have oh, kids?" Geez. And it always kind of irritated me. Like, ask her about her work. You know, uh, what? Yeah. like there's other things, but but I know that it was something she just had in her heart. And Hoda, I talked to you about it a little bit when I got pregnant with Hal. There was some guilt a, a little bit, and then. My mom said, and I, for, for both Barbara, and then I knew you wanted another baby, and my mom said, everybody gets their baby in their time. Mm. And this is Barbara's time. Oh, my mm. God. So how, how has she reacted to being a mom? Oh, well, she's just natural. I mean, I was the baby is little. She was six weeks early, just like Dylan. I can't believe it. I don't know so what is it. Same that. night, yes. same everything. Oh, right. Air. Um, but she, and she was, pl you know, was planning to deliver in New York, but She's here in Maine where um, where we grew up with our grandparents. So there's something almost beautiful. Like um, the nurse said yesterday, I think it's divine intervention. Mm. And um, so that's why she didn't have diapers or anything. I, I was just going to come for a little bit and fly home to be back at work today. But I realized right when I got here how overwhelming it is to bring a baby home, particularly if you have nothing. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to rent a car and run to Target multiple times, set up the nursery and do the things that I knew I knew she would do for me. Um, so anyway, the baby is healthy oh, and beautiful. Sweet. She's going to be in the NICU for a little bit, okay. but she's, you know, great. What about Georgia as the middle name? Is yeah. that a little tribute to your yeah. daddy? Yes. And that's what Henry was like, finally somebody named something after your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it is. It's it's in honor of him. And I think that's so sweet, Barbara. Um, we, you know, feel so lucky that he was ours. And I know Barbara wanted to pay tribute to him. So that is where um, that middle name comes from. It's a big one. Mm. Sure is. It's so sweet. Actually, your dad released a statement said, with full hearts, Laura and I are delighted to announce the birth of our new granddaughter. Cora is healthy and adorable, and we are proud and grateful. And I, I'm sure yeah. that it feels so good to have both of their daughters have their yeah. babies. It's yeah. just, oh, it's beautiful. I know, and I think they're going to get to meet the baby soon, so that just feels really good, too. I know Barbara's so looking forward to that. Well, I actually saw your kids yesterday, um, and they were like, we have a new baby cousin. <laughs> we, they were telling everyone on the street, we have a new baby cousin. Her name is Cora Georgia. So the word was going to get out. I'm glad the you guys announced out. it. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Savannah, thank you for having them over so I could come and be an aunt. Oh, I appreciate so it. But also, yeah, Miss Tang from school texted and was like, just so you know, I don't know if this is private, but Poppy is told every single person <laughs> in the school. <laughs> about her cousin and at that point it kind of was private and I was like well you know they better my dad better release the statement soon because Poppy had already been up at the podium <laughs> Poppy at the podium yeah, I love they're that. like the town criers well we love you Jenna enjoy we your love time with that I'll little see babe you tomorrow I can't wait all right we can't Aww, wait to see hug all Barbarita about it. for us and um, Savannah, too. by so, the way, they tried some other people, but they weren't available. So thanks so much for <laughs> I <know. laughs> Jenna, I know. I know. Jenna, you know that's not it true. It is. She knows it is no, true. Who? It was desperation. They're like, who, who, else who can we get here? No, try. Craig's got MSNBC. It is not true. Carson it's just not had true. it. They, you know what? Savannah, they just wanted an Emmy winner. You know what I mean? Oh. And there was only one person that could fill Can that just, trick. So congratulations. What? You know what, Jenna? So you even there, when you're all cozied up, you still teed up Savannah perfectly oh. for this moment. So we do oh, want to say yes. we love you, Jenna. And we want to say we love you, JBA. Congrats. I know Dylan, you, what wait, about Dylan? Wait, no, no. Sorry, in order of importance. Dylan Dreyer has given birth way, as yes. well. Yes. Russell James Fischera was born at 2.38 a.m. today. He's a little one, too. Came early, getting one to get here in, on planet Earth, weighing in at five pounds and five ounces, and mom and baby are doing great. Dylan's got three boys. Boy, three boys. And a husband who's a yes. boy. He's like a baby. So she's, she's got, got three boys and, under and, four. And then one baby who's over 
35. <laughs> yes. I one mean, big old one baby, big named old baby Brian named Brian. Brian. Anyway, congrats, Dylan. Um, I want to say hats off to you, and I want to toast you. So, first of all, can we bring in our special drink that we have, especially Ooh. for you? It, it's no, it's co National yes, Coffee Day. It's National Coffee Day, but that's a side note. These are alcoholic coffee oh, beverages. Yes. Here you go, Miss. Oh, my gosh. Kahlua you know I get can? mad that you don't drink on this show I know. Anymore. Well, I don't know why we stopped. <laughs> I, I'm so happy. What? Oh, coffee wait. and Kahlua. alcohol? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, stop Ooh. it. It's Kahlua in a can. This, this is, is one delish. of the first drinks that you had when you were when you first oh, yeah. started drinking. It's so true because it tasted like yes, chocolate you were milk. Like, what is it? Um, that and wine coolers. This is Remember Bartles and James? I love okay. that. I love to wine cooler. Cheers. Cooler. Cheers. Here's to Savannah Guthrie, no, you guys. Just, yes, it is. Here's to National Coffee. Um, Savannah won. An Emmy Award last night, Ooh, and this tasty. was a. By the way, this was a big one. I don't know where the hardware is. Hopefully, it's around. But so Savannah won for best live TV interview. I don't know if there's anything more difficult in our industry than doing a live interview. You can do things on tape. You can edit. You can make things look beautiful. Sitting for a live interview. This is for the town hall with uh, President Trump at the time, and it was a moment. And I know it took a lot of, of prepping and work. And I don't think people get it. They just think you show up and you do your thing. But it was one of those moments. Moment, so congratulations. Well, you're your so partner. sweet to do it. You're really, she really nice. She asked thank me you. Not to. I know because it's, em it's embarrassing, and, but it was, we had a huge, wonderful team, and it feels good. And you're super sweet to bring it up. Now, let's. Speaking of sweet, this is delicious. This is super sweet. If it you is. like sweet coffee, it's let's a little have sweet. It. You mm. don't. It doesn't taste like alcohol, which could be dangerous. Mm. Oh, I think you don't like sweet. You don't like it. It's not for you. Kahlua, it's, it's espresso style martini, velvety smooth twist in a classic cocktail mm, I like with coffee ish. It. Yeah. All right. It's funny that you said it's not for you. I'm trying to teach my kids to, you know, instead of like saying, I hate yeah. that or I don't like it, yeah. just say, it's, it's not, not for me. It's not for me. Broccoli, it's not for it's you. Not. <laughs> Except for it is, so eat it. <laughs> All right. By the way, if you like our show, we do this kind of behind the scenes show. It's like a new little thing. It'll show you how the sausage is made yeah. for better, for worse. So you get to see how it's created. Yeah, so it's on today all yeah. day. We did this at the Olympics, remember? Oh, and yeah, Al yeah, hosted yeah. it. It was like, how do we make a show at the Olympics? Yeah. Well, it, people liked it. They liked seeing behind the curtain all the crazy. Um, so it's called Making of Today. Mm -hmm. They're going to do it periodically. Um, it's a behind the scenes look at how we put four hours of television on air every single day the good, the bad, the ugly. And the, we have a clip. Oh, we do? Okay, yeah, yeah, behind the scenes with Donna teaching you guys how to do TikTok. It's oh, not good. Let's see. Oh, look at no, that. just video. Oh, just Thank video. God. Okay, look. No, it's not good. I really people, am jealous of your TikTok account. People don't like our TikTok, do they? What are you talking I about? I don't think they like it. Donna, I live for like your it? TikTok. They do like it? Donna, okay. are we going to do a TikTok today since I'm here? I do. Okay, Donna I says, want to. Okay, we're, okay, we're going to do it. Yeah. We're doing it. Okay. Today Talks continues after the break, and you don't want to miss it. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from The Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Our documentary of the month, and this one has become a huge hit. Yeah, we're talking about Amazon Prime's Lula Rich, which has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But for those of you who haven't seen it yet, here's a taste of what it's all about. What is the real story? 
of Lula Rowe. That's the question four-part docu-series Lula Rich aims to answer. We are creating confidence and security. This is a huge opportunity in America. What started as a maxi skirt business out of Deanne and Mark Stidham's home grew to be a billion dollar company selling colorful clothing through more than 80,000 independent retailers. I had achieved the dream. I was selling magic leggings. But while Lula Rowe describes itself as a community where lives are being blessed and dreams achieved, Lula Rich sheds light on a different side of the story. There's magic in the air, but most people have not sold anything. It seemed too good to be true. And it was. There was a lot of desperation of keeping the people happy amongst underlying massive issues. Women were selling breast milk so they could afford startup costs. It had just become a circus. They're using cheap language of feminism. We were empowered and then the husband was supposed to take over. I'm gonna lose my house. Lula Rowe has faced dozens of lawsuits since 2017, citing poor quality products, unfair refund policies, and misleading practices, among other claims. The company has denied these allegations. In 2019, Washington State filed a civil suit against Lula Rowe for allegedly operating as an illegal pyramid scheme. While not admitting wrongdoing, Lula Rowe settled the case for $4.75 million. Some people took that box of clothing and turned it into a million dollars. And some people took that box of clothing and put it in the closet because it scared them. The question is, what did you want out of it? With lawsuits still pending, the company remains in business, offering what they describe as freedom through fashion. And with us now are directors Jenner First and Julia Willoughby Nason. Welcome. It's so great to have you guys here. Thank uh, you for having us. How has it been, Jenner, for you, to, with the reaction to this mm -hmm. project you'd been working on? And it's really exploded. Yeah, I think it's amazing for all documentaries. You know, when people pay attention to a story like this, it helps the whole community of storytellers because we're all working on something we think the world should see at this level. It was such a shocker to uh, just to see some of these allegations. People were losing their homes, people selling their breast milk. Mm -hmm. um, I was finding it hard to believe that the two owners sat down and spoke mm -hmm. with you. So how did that come to be? I think we, you know, we talked to the founders and we told them what we're doing. They know the work we've done. We do a 360 degree view of all of our documentaries. So we mm -hmm. really want to hear, you know, the story from the founders first person. Mm -hmm. This is so important to tell the story and they they realized that we were going to do the story with or without their voice mm. so I think they wanted to be included in that narrative and we're grateful in a way to have all the time we spent with them which is about a five hour interview to really have them flesh out their backstory and their impetus to make this mm. company work. And have you heard from them since the series was released? No. no. The last time we heard from them is when we tried to do the interview asking them to respond to all the allegations. A and, second interview. Yeah, and what okay. we got in return was a statement. Yeah. What about the people who were victims of this? Have you heard from them? Yeah, and I yeah. think the outpouring has been incredible online. There was already a community of people that had come together to create justice around this story. And so for them, this is like, you know, a major moment that finally the world is validating what they have been fighting for for mm -hmm. years now. When you got into this, Julia, what surprised you the most? Mm -hmm. I think what surprised me the most was that this story is about our patriarchal system inherently. And when I asked the characters from the MLM expert to the retailers that were hurt yeah. by misogyny, they were almost taken back when asked about the definition or if they thought this was a patriarchy itself. Mm -hmm. So that was very surprising to me that threading that direct needle was repelling to some of the characters. We did uh, reach out to LuLaRoe for comment and this is what they told us in part that they have never operated a pyramid scheme and quote there is so much missing from this documentary from our standpoint but LuLaRoe stands firm in continuing to contribute to the empowerment of anyone that feels they want to be part of a community that believes in freedom and flexibility. So the company still is in existence? Oh yeah, it's still in existence. I think this is a bigger commentary. You know, we don't look at, you know, pin the tail on the donkey and here's mm -hmm. a bad guy. This is a whole culture. Multi-level marketing has exist now for decades. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's able to exist is that it's condoned by our, you know, system of government. But the statistics say that, you know, most people either lose money or break even. Mm -hmm. And if you have to have an upline 
that if you have to have an upline and a downline and your downline is not making any money and that's what's a requisite mm -hmm. for you to succeed, that's probably not a good business right. model. It's a right. good warning for folks and yeah. they can stream Lula Rich right now on Amazon Prime Video. Congrats to you both and Congrats. thanks for being here. Thanks so much Thank for having so us. My name is John Stewart. I've been away from television for some time. This is what I look like now. First thing, I mean, how did it feel to be back in front of an audience? Were you like, ah, oh, sweet studio audience? Or were you nervous? Uh, because of the COVID, I, I still like, I'm still not very pleased like when anybody exhales. Like I just sort of thought like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this like free diving. We're gonna go into the studio. We're gonna hold our breath for as long as we can hold it. And then we're out of there. But uh, so I'm still not as comfortable. I have performed since then. You know, uh, uh, Dave Chappelle put together this kind of great stand up series and music series, all this stuff in a cornfield in Ohio. So I've done a little bit of that. So I, I was around some audience, although it's funny uh, when we did it in the field, everybody had to be masked because this was still early on. So there was no vaccine, there was no nothing. And it felt a little bit like a Faustian bargain. Like you can perform, you can do your comedy, but you can see no one's mouths. You can see no smiles. So, That's hard as a performer, isn't it? You look for the crinkle in the eye. You come back off stage, you go like, oh my God, did you see the crinkle? I was killing out there. <laughs> so crinkly. Why would I go back to a visual medium? I could have done a podcast. Unfortunately, it was my idea. I'm the idiot that controlled <laughs> myself. Um, so yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited to do it. It felt like uh, a nice evolution of the kinds of conversations that we've been having on The Daily Show and things like that. Let's just get this out of the way. Is it funny? There are, there are hopefully, I mean, hopefully, there, there are moments of, of humor and, and levity. I mean, that's kind of what I do. I mean, it, it sort of starts, if, if you had seen kind of the things that we've done on The Daily Show, it begins with kind of a, a more Daily Show-esque essay at the top, sort of a more visual video essay to, to kind of orient the audience to whatever topic or issue that we're discussing. And, and then it moves on to things that are probably a, a little bit less familiar for, for that audience. But uh, depending on the topic, yeah, I mean, certainly the, the episode on toxic exposures in the military is slightly less amusing than, let's say, the freedom episode. But, y y you know, it's, it's of a similar piece and we have some, some humor in it, we hope. We're talking about this country. What's okay, what isn't? What are the priorities? That has to change or nothing will change. I, I thought watching it, the answer is yes, it's funny. It, it'll make you laugh, but it also <laughs> might, but it also yes. might make you cry. Oh, well that, hold on a second. I, thank I'm you. I'm gonna use that on the, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry. That's going, that's going right on the magazine head, Savannah. That's, I'm gonna put that in quotes, Savannah Guthrie, Today Show. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry. Maybe I missed my career in marketing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. You're the blurb queen. Everybody who said, I'm going to talk to Savannah Gupta. Oh, the, are you talking about the blurb queen? Oh, yeah. Blurb. She, she can blurb it like nobody blurbs it. Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from Ground Zero, as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been drowned. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get you in. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I served an amazing group of staff and students. 
Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from Ground Zero, as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been drowned. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get you a hand. I'm John Stewart. Why don't we begin tonight with something non-controversial? We support our troops unless they actually need support. There's a lot of it that feels like The Daily Show, mm. but it also is going a lot deeper. And I don't mean deeper so. into the controversy. You're going deeper into the substance. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's, uh, you know, part of the experience of, of the last few years has been realizing that some of the things that you believe are the obstacles to certain progress or certain improvements and things that just seem obvious are not what's actually going on. You know, uh, like the Today Show, like you're in there every day, man. You make your bones on volume. Like no matter what, you're there. And, and you can create that impression. And it felt to me a, maybe a chance to step back for a second and maybe look at the system. I don't think I'm gonna miss being on television every day. I'm gonna miss coming here every day. Was there any part of you that decided to come back to TV because of anything that's happened in the last five years where you felt like, I am dying to get this off my chest. I wish I had a show right now because if I did, I would say mm. this. Not really. I mean, I feel like I get things. I mean, maybe that's because of stand up, but I, I feel like I get to get things off my chest all the time. I have children. I get to I, I get to <laughs> unburden myself at breakfast and dinner almost every day. Uh, uh, one of the audience members said, you know, these past five years, you've missed so much the entirety of the Trump administration and the pandemic. And I, and I had to say that, you know, I just so you know, like, I am still alive in the world. Like it's, you know, I think there's a sense sometimes that when you're not on television, you stop existing because that's how people sort of see you. Yeah. It really had more to do with an idea I had about one of the reasons why I, I left The Daily Show is I felt that I had stagnated, that, that I really didn't, I couldn't think of how to evolve that format in a meaningful enough way that it made sense to stay. And, you know, people have asked me, uh, did you feel the pressure from the audience and things like that? I, I never felt that, but you do from the staff, you know, that like you've got this staff, they're young, they're really talented, they're hungry, they're industrious and your mind's wandering. I love the people here. They're the best. They're creative and, and collaborative and kind and, and, that's alliterative, but it's cheating because it's a K, but you, 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 you understand what I'm saying. They're, I love them and respect them so much. Uh, we love you guys. Yeah! And so that's not fair to them. Yeah. Uh, and this idea that I had w was the first time I felt like, oh, that, that feels like an evolution to me that makes sense, that's organic and that I'm, I feel invested in. And so that's, I think that was more the motivation of it. And also the, the children and, and Tracy have had enough of me. I think that was a lot of it as well. They just thought like, you know, office in New York, get up there maybe three, five times a week. Not a bad thing. I don't have any specific plans. Got a lot of ideas. I got a lot of things in my head. We need to talk about this new pastime of yours that yes. happened during the interregnum, during the time you were off The Daily Show. Yes. You, you've gotten a new talent. Do you want to tell us, tell the viewers about it? First of all, very kind of you to say a new talent. Uh, I didn't say I you were talented. A, I, I have a new, let, let's say a, this, I have a new behavioral tick involving <laughs> uh, drumsticks. Um, yeah, no, it's something I'd, I'd always wanted to be, to interact with music. I think if I could, you know, most comedians, I think, are probably frustrated musicians. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do it. And it turns out guitar is 
really hard. <laughs> and I, so I, I picked up a guitar and I tried that and I thought, oh, it's going to be like five to seven years before I can just play black. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> 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 Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And, but I do know how to hit things and bang on them. I've done that. And so I started that not, not realizing obviously the intricacies and, and how complex and, and difficult really playing drums is, but it does allow you to put on headphones and put on some of your favorite music and kind of, you know, bang away at it and I'm just man I've loved it. I wish I wish I had more time for it I wish I was better at it okay how did how does the family feel about your drum playing well if you can imagine imagine you're living with an older gentleman who won't stop doing this hey man how's the pizza the drummer's overbite oh the the drummer's overbite sometimes you shut the eyes uh but you can imagine so i'm generally annoying because i like to talk a lot so at meals that's annoying and then when you add tapping that just that that elevates it to an entirely new scale of oh my god when do i get to go to college (laughs) Well, let's go back to the show. You know, you do something in the show that you didn't ever do at The Daily Show, which is you went out in the field and actually conducted an interview. Yes. One-on-one. Yes. It wasn't humorous. The no. first interview you did was with our Veterans Affairs Secretary, member yes. of the cabinet. It was tense. This delay is killing people. <laughs> yes. I was, I, as soon as I was out there, I was like, oh, my God, is this what the correspondents had to do? This is awful. I don't like this at all. Yeah, you're just sitting there in a room and there's no audience and there's the lights and you're like, hey, I think this guy might be getting mad at me. This isn't good. How am I going to get out of this? It's really unpleasant. Yeah, it's this- very, I, I don't care for it. Very tense. Does that mean you're going to be nicer to the media in, in this new show? No. no. Yeah, Should people not- expect you to skewer, skewer the media as you did? Should Fox News be scared? One question didn't seem to really come up that much, which is, yeah, what is Fox? Listen, man, I was on every day for 16 years. They weren't scared. So uh, I don't think anybody should be scared of of, of anything that we do. But hopefully, uh, you know, it it will be we'll still hopefully have that same eye for 
hypocrisy, you know, contradictions, things like that. But maybe a more realistic eye of like what the efficacy of pointing that out is, which apparently is very low. What about dissent? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you want to bring in dissenting views? Would you ever want to do, dare I say it, a crossfire mm -hmm. style interview or debate with someone? Does that appeal to you at all? I mean, debate is always, I mean, in, anytime you have an opportunity, I mean, I think that like the interview that we did, it, it wasn't necessarily crossfire, but it, it certainly wasn't two like-minded individuals sitting down. I mean, I think you always want to hear, I think the question is, is that idea of opposing viewpoints mm -hmm. because it, it sets it up as a, a kind of a binary. And I think if anything that I've kind of figured out over the years is there's very little binary that exists other than within kind of a, a media construct, because as you know, like the difficulty with, with media is it has to be producible. So I think the benefit of not having to do something with a, a recipe where the elements of it have to always be somewhat similar so that you can make it uh, gives you an opportunity to maybe move in directions that you wouldn't normally have to move in. And, and so I don't, I, I don't look at it as, oh, we're going to get a contrary, we're going to get the pro and we're going to get the con because so little of these issues really revolves around that. It actually generally revolves around there's, there's an obstacle in the system or it's incentivized in such a way that these are the outcomes that are, uh, that are happening. So it's more, you know what I would imagine it is in some ways? It's like WebMD, it's diagnostic. And, and I think it's sort of hard to figure out what to do about something if you're not, if the diagnosis isn't quite right. And so I think part of this is diagnostic. What's really the problem with John Stewart? That, that's right, <laughs> you hope, I, or, or not, or it could be, this could be completely wrong. You know, that can be sometimes the problem with something that's theoretical is you have this idea of how you want to diagnose something, but when you're met with the reality of it, it's, it's quite different. It's been six years since The Daily Show. Is there anything in your perspective that has changed or any new information or just your own evolution that you're bringing to this show that you didn't have six years ago? It's, it's hard to say because that's, you probably have to be a little bit more self-aware. <laughs> you know, like, I'm trying to think like, what have I learned in six yeah, I mean, years? Yeah, I'm basically like, asking you, like, have you grown, John Stewart? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I y you <laughs> hope, but um, but that's one of those that I think it's it's hard to say. I mean, I I can certainly tell you, physically, I haven't. Um, in fact, the opposite. You know, y you would hope that there are there's an evolution and there are things you've learned and, and you do things better. And unfortunately, that just generally leads you to uh, revelations of the things you still don't do right or or the places for growth that you still need to address. It's all kind of I, I wish it were, you know, the arc of the moral universe for people is long, but it bends towards better. But I think we all know it's it's peaks and valleys and ups and downs. I'm going to have uh, dinner <laughs> on a school night with my family, who I have heard from multiple sources <laughs> are lovely people. You like you like to think you're on that kind of nice linear slope up of of evolution and and betterment uh but boy it's it's sisyphusian Sis is that a word sisyphusian yeah. uh you get kinda, you, again. You, Hold on. yeah there you go you grow a little bit you slide you think you know what the problem is the problem with john stewart is you don't know what your blind spots are because you're blind to them and so you can shine a light on one area and grow in that area and all of a sudden this other shadow appears and you know i think that's kind of the that's that's the whole game isn't it
it's very human. It's very, I mean, that's it. <laughs> it yeah. Finally, you, I, I read um, that you said in this, in the time after, I, I don't want to call it your retirement. You didn't retire. I know. I, why, I'm, you're, I know I'm like, you're mad at me now because I keep suggesting that. No, it's not. It's fine. No, but it's, in this. It's not the anything I haven't thought yeah. of. In this period of time, um, mm -hmm. I read, you felt like being away from that daily grind, you said that life got richer and more colorful. And I liked that, but can you tell me more? Like, can you elaborate? Um, well, it's probably some, you know, you know that feeling because you are, listen, man, you you guys are there every day. And, and the harder part about what you do is you're doing what we did on the, on the Daily Show, but you're doing it at four in the morning, you know, or you're, you know, that's it. No, that's not a complaint. Everybody's got a job to do and, and those jobs have parameters, but I felt like the daily shit, you, you, it's like looking through life through that, that tube, you know, that cardboard roller that you pull out of a paper towel roll. And so you have a sense. Does the white house think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative. Shame. This is Southlake. All episodes available now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's Principal of the Year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It becomes your world that you're, you're so hyper-focused on this one thing that it gives you this really narrow field of view. And then when you leave it, there's this expectation that you've somehow diminished your life and experience by removing this incredible opportunity you had, this incredible success you had. And so you you remove the tube and then you go, oh my God, it feels like one of those videos where the guy puts on the glasses for the first time and sees colors, where you're just like, oh, it's, I had no idea that all this was going on. Uh, and and it, it was kind of a beautiful, there was a weird, I think, for the first few months after leaving the show, I was a little Forrest Gumpy, like <laughs> just out in the world, like, how, what? You don't need to swipe the card. You just hold it up. And suddenly the groceries are yours. <laughs> I impossible. Outrageous. I love it. <laughs> you know, it was that kind of thing. So, <laughs> Emerging from like the space time continuum. Yeah, there's a little bit of Rip Van Winkle to it. And I think even to the point of just being able to pick the kids up from school, you know, I, I had experienced fatherhood in the crying times. Like it was always getting them ready for school or getting them ready for bed. Yeah. So it was always those moments of like, I don't want to do that. And I don't want to do that. And you were like, mm, these children seem peculiar <laughs> and resistant. Uh, so having those moments of, just picking them up from school and driving them home and listen to the conversation in the back where they don't aren't as aware of you're in there. It's so much more revelatory and, and lovely. And uh, so I really appreciated that. And I think that informed how I went back to doing another television show is I, I didn't want to put myself in another position where my field of view got so narrowed again. I really wanted to have the satisfaction of the work without that other element of 
just to to the to the detriment of all these other things in life. I believe they refer to it as balance. I was just about to say, John Stewart sounds like you have it all. Uh, what? Ding. I... <laughs> I was looking for a good little ending. How do you like that as an ending? It's it's nice. Obviously, you know, you have it all, but I still live within my own head, which yeah. is, you know, as you know, not a pleasant. That's not a good, not this pleasant. isn't a good ending. Now you're like, just, you're messing it all up. <laughs> now it's getting yeah, all complicated. Probably, yeah, that's probably true. That's probably true. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for doing it. I, did Thank I miss you. anything that we should have talked about that you were having on, that you wanted to get off your chest that I, did I screw it up? I was a little surprised, you know, I asked my doctor, why is my hair completely gray? And he's like, you know, your body stops producing the, the coloring. And I was like, is that, can your body just do that? Like, so that was just something I wanted to talk about that I didn't realize that parts of your body die before the rest of you. Like, okay. it's sort of like, you ever go to a deli and it's like eight and you're going in for a sandwich, but they've put all the saran wrap on all this and you're like, Hey man, can I get a sandwich? You're like, no, we put it away. And you're like, but it's a deli and I'd like a, I'd like a sandwich. You're like, yeah, no, we don't make those anymore until tomorrow. And that's what, that's what your body does. It's like, it's shut down before you're even, you're like, but I'm still using my head. Yeah. Like, what yeah, no. Okay, I'm gonna so try to, no. Okay, I'm gonna try to work that in. <laughs> It'll flow. Uh, let me see what I can do. But I'm not, a, I'm not a magician, for God's sake. Inside Levi Stadium, home to the San Francisco 49ers, a very different kind of huddle. You accomplish your individual goal when the team accomplishes their goal. Star NFL players, staff, and dozens of specially drafted local kids discovering the power of mentorship. After being kept apart by COVID, they're finally meeting in person. Zoom is cool, but this is even better, right? Part of a groundbreaking partnership between an organization called 100 Black Men, working with Bay Area boys and girls, now joining forces with the 49ers. Sharing stories and advice on leadership, networking, health and wellness, and financial literacy. Football is only for so long, but us touching one of those kids, that lasts a lifetime. Linebacker Fred Warner and defensive lineman Eric Armstead are some of the biggest names in the game. We play football on Sundays, but you know we also have a lot more to give than just playing football. What you do outside of the stadium is as important as what you do inside. Absolutely. You more know, important, more important. There more you go. More important, why? What you do inside the stadium obviously gives you the platform, but what you do with that platform is more important. Uh, it's more impactful. Even if you know, you're fortunate enough to get your name up here, in the stadium, that will go away, but uh, how you impact people and how um, you help people will remain after you're gone. That support means the world to 17-year-old Jonathan Martin. A mentor is somebody who will have your back. A star student with over a 4.0 GPA, like so many other kids, he struggled with anxiety and stress throughout the pandemic. It has definitely been uh, isolating. Just not able to have any interaction has been very tough. He said connecting with his 49er mentors helped pull him through. They taught me to keep going, persevere. Um, this is going to end one day. So just having the mentors there to coach me up and tell me that um, these things will be over with and that you will have a, a good time has just been a great help. It's an inspiring partnership born out of one of the most consequential moments in our nation's history, the murder of George Floyd and the reckoning that followed. We saw a whole world that um, was really shifted and changed uh, by that moment. 49ers general manager John Lynch was one of those people changed. We huddled up and we said, what can we do? How, how can we make an impact to make things better? And uh, I think through a lot of conversation and uncomfortable conversation came, we have to do something. Did that impact you personally? Oh, absolutely. Has this program changed the 49ers? I know it's changed me. You know, it's changed Fred Warner. It inspires me to want to do better. If I could have seen someone, you know, who looked like me and, you know, was somewhere where I wanted to be, saying as a young person, oh, I want to be an NFL player one day, and for that NFL player to tell me, you can be so much more. You know, don't, don't just shoot for the stars, just shoot past the stars. 
that's why I want to do what, what we're doing. You know, it's, it's really important. Warner and Armstead also have a message for kids who feel alone and might be struggling. At times, you may feel like you have no one, no one that cares, no one that understands. Um, I may not know you, we may not ever meet, but I care. I think you deserve every opportunity to be successful and, and live a great life. I encourage people to educate themselves, just be a good person, be a good human being, because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna matter. Okay, what, if, what would you say if someone told you that at 60 years old, that's when all your dreams were going to come true? You were going to marry the love of your life. You were going to host your own cooking show. It was all going to happen during a pandemic. Would you believe <laughs> no, that? No, there's no way. But that's what happened for Madeline Smithberg, once a television producer for Late Night with David Letterman and the co-creator and executive producer of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Madeline went from producing cooking segments on TV to starring in her own YouTube show called Mad in the Kitchen. Girl, everything is working for you. You are up in Seattle, Washington, crack of dawn. Did you ever imagine, Madeline, that in this moment you would be, we would, that would have been the intro that was read before your segment started? <laughs> no. Hi, Hoda. Hi, Jenna. Hi. I really felt, even this morning as I woke up, God, I must have drank too much wine last night because I had a dream <laughs> that I was going to be on the Today Show this morning. Silly me. No, the whole thing has been one giant out-of-body experience. Uh, for anybody, we played, crazy. we played Leslie Odom Jr.'s song, Wait For It, this yeah. morning, um, talking about voting. But but what, if for anybody that's like, oh my gosh, I want that love, or yeah. I want this career that, to, that I want, you know, that, that fulfills me, what do you say to them? I say always have hope, never give up. I mean, the day that I started this channel, I was on my couch in my pajamas crying audibly because <laughs> the pandemic had taken my career pivot as a chef away and my wedding had been canceled. And I just handed my husband, Sam, the TV. We, get, we ran away and got married. And uh, I, said, I handed him my phone and I said, shoot me, I'm gonna make some pasta. And six months later, here I am. It's nuts. <laughs> what about just it's the idea totally of meeting someone later in life? Because that's another thing. People say, well, maybe I missed that shot. Our story is kind of interesting because we first mm -hmm. met and fell in love in 1986 and he dumped me <laughs> very unceremoniously, <laughs> found me on Facebook and 34 years later, we got married oh, and we'd I always both that. been, oh. it's kind of, it's like, even if it wasn't my story. So I want to talk to you about what I'm making today. Oh, yeah, just yeah, so yeah, we yeah, can there's that. Yes. But I can I, I can talk and cook. Okay, All right, I'm show a, us. Show us task. what you're making, because I think a lot of people want a dish to make for to comfort eat tonight. So tell us what we should eat. This is the ultimate comfort food. It is based on, so I spend a lot of time in Italy. I have a house there. I work for Italian TV. And the combination of butter and sage is yes. called burro salvia. And basically, you can put it on paper towels and uh, <laughs> impress your friends. So I decided to use butternut squash because I simply love it and I think that butternut squash ravioli is something that is yes. familiar really took it took it apart and I'm putting it back together I've made uh, a sauce with caramelized onions mm. sage mm. butternut squash mm. ricotta milk nutmeg yeah. mm. and I boiled my lasagna noodles and I always do them two minutes less then it says on the box oh. because they're going to go in the oven. You don't want them to be mushy. No. And I, like some mushy I make my sauce. Oh, if you don't want butternut squash, if for some reason you don't like it, you can use acorn squash. You can use pumpkin or you can use yes, canned. Girl. You can do the pumpkin spice lasagna roll. <laughs> yes. It's perfect for the season. But whatever you do, if you've got the butter, you got the sage, you got the nutmeg. You can't go wrong. <laughs> so I've made my mixture, and now I've got my noodles, and I've cooked them, as I said, yeah. two minutes under. I did them a little too much the other night, yeah. and they were too mushy. And when that happens, I get very depressed. And how long do you cook them in the oven, honey? Uh, 25 minutes covered, and then you take the tin foil off, and in the last 10 minutes, you add 
more mozzarella and parmesan show, than you think show is us the beauty legal. Yes, we need to see we need it to, we want more time with there you there we go oh let's see it wait oh oh here it comes oh, oh, it's oh, oh, coming oh. out mad okay. in the kitchen you, oh. wait, hang on you can get that we got to see that oh, hold, oh. careful Oh, man. That was, <laughs> okay. There it is. That looks it's so really good. It's really a beautiful thing. And you've got your little roll-ups, which makes it just a little more fun than lasagna. Matt, okay. by the way, we love you. We want we you know, to come we back. We want you to come here and host with us. I will you? be back. You, I'm going to camp out at your door yes, with my pots yes. and pans. All right. I'm having the time of oh, my life. Oh, and, my God, that was uh, so fun. We, can we love tell. you. We're going to see you back here in Studio 1A soon. Get that recipe today.com slash food. Okay, and we'll be back right after this. <laughs> love. Love. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines. So crucial for reopening America. A big day around here. A very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? the vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're back with Jeffrey Zakarian and the apples of his eyes, his daughters, 13-year-old <laughs> Madeline and 11-year-old Anna. You guys, these young girls are co-authors, co-authors of their first cookbook called The Family That Cooks Together. Uh, oh. As you would expect, it's chock full of delicious recipes. But since it's autumn, it's apple season, so many of you are taking weekend trips to the orchards with your family. We are going to learn how to make a fall favorite, an apple crumble. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi, oh my morning. gosh! Je can you believe this, Jeffrey? That your two young girls are authors at ages 13 and 11. Uh, yeah, I just want to say the picture of the cookbook is probably like a year ago, kind of. So they're like growing every day like apples. And yes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's incredible. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm so proud of them. Well, Madeline and Anna, what are your favorite things about cooking with your dad? Um, I love family time and I like, just love cooking with you because it's so fun. I like, just love cooking. Does he let I, you do things yeah. or d does he kind of take over and say, honey, like this, do it like that? It, yeah, it's sort of like, do, if I'm just in the kitchen, I can do it, but sometimes he has OCD in the kitchen. So. <laughs> Anna, what do you think about cooking with the big man? He, it's really fun. He teaches me a lot of like new trip, tricks and like tips with Aww. everything. Well, okay, so we want to hear, you guys are making an apple crumble. Do y'all ever go to the orchards yeah. and pick apples? Every yes, year. all the time. We love it. And there are so many apples out there. And today we are going to use uh, Cortland's to make an apple crumble. And it's very simple. This is a sort of a foolproof method. If you mess it up, the peeling or whatever it is, don't worry about it. So I'm just taking a Cortland apple. I'm going to show you how to peel it just top down like that. Very simple. Top down. And, okay. um, and if you want to do this ahead of time, what I recommend is you take a bowl of water and put some lemon in it and just drop the apples yes. in that. What's that way the... it keeps it from browning. Very oh. easy tip. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter if I leave a little on, it's fine. Another tip I like to show is how to core. Now, a lot of people take that core and dig and all that. That's way too much work. I just put it right on top end and go down like three or four times. Yeah, just cut right? around it. Just like that. And voila. Boom. Okay, that's done. All then right. I'm going to cut it in some slices and give it over to my girls, and they're going to show you the rest. Okay. okay. So What's this is next, like a guys? little moving factory we got going on here. Okay, like so go. 
Here you go, Anna. Want to pass that down? Yes. Put the rest. Put Okay, I think that's good. So I have some apples here, and I have buttered a baking pan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add some cinnamon, mm -hmm. some sugar, mm. and you're just going to mix that up, yeah. try to not spill it everywhere. And Madeline, could you use brown sugar if you'd prefer it for the crumble? Yes, you could absolutely use brown sugar. Okay, good yeah. to know. <laughs> okay, and, and now then, what do I am going to pour it in, and I'm going to fill about three fourths of the way. I, I'm going to, I, there's, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks yeah. beautiful. So now we're going to start with our crumble. This is the topping of the apple crumble. So we have flour, dried oats, brown sugar, cinnamon, mm. salt, and then this butter. You want to chill your butter before so you can um, cut it into small cubes. Yeah. So yeah. I've already added everything in. And then you can just mix it with your hands oh, with like your that. fingers, yes. just crumble that up. Uh, you have kids. This would be great for the kids. Yeah, this <laughs> really something good. we could do. By the on. way, it does look foolproof. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty it surprised is. that this is all we this is all we need. Okay, now what do you do, guys? You want it to be so, sort of like a sandy consistency, and these butter things pebbles. of butter pebbles yeah. are really good. Yeah, they are. So we're just gonna add. Oh, this, this looks so good. I cannot wait to eat this. Unlike a pie, this takes a lot less Thank work. You. Unlike now, Jeffrey, a pie. Jeffrey, though, the, let's just get, settle yeah. one thing. Wouldn't you say that a crumble and no, a pie... No, no, do not wait. Do not, do not tilt the scales. Jeffrey, is a crumble the same thing as a pie? I said, is a crumble related to a pie? <laughs> to the, like brothers and sisters. You no, know, I, I think it's its daughters. own. I think, it, I think it has its own sort of strata because what this is is pretty much the same ingredients. You have flour and all that stuff. Thank you. You might have some more things. In, but but this is much simpler. You don't have to roll it and toast it, and uh, you just pop it in the oven. Watch. They're going to hand this to me, and like in about four minutes, we've done it, right? It's so That's it? More time. So four 350 minutes. degrees, one hour. Take it out. Oh. Let it cool a bit because it's got to stop bubbling and get all nice and perfectly set. Okay. Sort of like lasagna. Ooh. So look at that, so how delicious see. that Gorgeous. is. So we're going to cut yeah. that and go in deep and try oh, girl. because it is apple season and the big apple. Yeah. Oh, so now girls. tell me, do you Wait, add a little ice you gotta, cream? You do you gotta add, add a little ice cream. Ala to that, Madeline, Anna? Yes. yes. It's so uh, you could always do add anything you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Even is in the morning, so you could add ice cream. Oh, so yeah. cool. Cool. Oh, it's I wish like we could have some. Yeah, this is <laughs> sad. <laughs> this is real sad, y'all. All right, well, you've been. We'll be us. back soon. All right, thank you, guys. Girls, you all are great. We wish you a long. We can't wait till you can come to our studio and, cook and with talk us. about yeah. your book and cook with us. And Jeffrey, you can come too. Yes. <laughs> thank you. All right, <laughs> thanks for having us. Thank you. you got thank it. you so much. You're thank welcome. you. Bye. Have a great day. You thank too. You. For this recipe, head to slash food Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. <laughs> Celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Still to come on the Channel 2 News. Well, the waters are certainly receding now. Still too close to call. Lester Holt reporting from Ground Zero, as it's uh, being referred to. It is, in fact, the taste of freedom. The Haitian people know a little something about resiliency. What's the biggest risk right now? Some of the troops who have been drowned. I want to welcome you to the first presidential debate. In fact, we've been told we can't go any farther. Here are some resilient folks. Let me get in. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
We're talking about meatloaf, and today we are serving it up three different ways. Yes, whether you're a meat lover or a vegetarian, there's something for everyone, courtesy of today contributor and lifestyle expert, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mayhew. Mayhew. Okay, Hi. three, I didn't know there were three kinds of meatloaf. There's so many kinds of meatloaf. The uh. beauty of this is you're starting with ground meat, and you can pretty much add anything to it. And you okay. can start with almost anything. The other thing I like, this takes no cooking aptitude, so I know y'all are going to be okay. into oh, this. Oh, thank you. Oh, number yes. one. <laughs> and number two, these are great to do with your kids, because it's like, if you I can know. play with Play-Doh, you can make Meatloaf, By the way, so. kids do love a meatloaf. So okay. let's start with a turkey meatloaf. This has an Asian flair. Jenna, if you want to go sure. ahead and start so adding. So these are the ingredients. So those, it's kind of simple. What do we have here? So we have, through. we're starting with chopped water chestnuts, yep. which are delicious and add a little crunch. Some um, like five scallions, green onion, whatever you want to call it. A bunch of ginger. Now, if you're not feeling well, add a little spice of ginger, more ginger. Yep. Yeah, ginger so good you for you. Um, and then meat love. So this is a turkey base. So this is like if you're not a meat lover, great. Okay. Then we're gonna add. Um, I like to add my wet ingredients. So what um, is that? So this eggs? is two eggs. You yeah. need an egg to bind it. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. Come back here. Come here. Like one sorry. good little trick is I like to add all of the wet ingredients together. In one bowl. So what's that yeah. One? So this is hoisin sauce. And then hoisin we're gonna sauce. add some soy sauce. You can do that, Joan, if you want to sure. mix that up. Okay. And then um, I'm gonna add some Dijon mustard. Oh yeah. Okay. Some sesame oil. Yeah. And uh -huh. some red pepper flakes. Like again, that's to taste. Mix that all up. Add it to that. You're gonna mix it all so together. You just dump that in. You dump it in. That's wow. it. You mix it if you want to. Like you can use your hands. Okay. I know that's a little no. messy for today. Yeah. Now let's yeah. move on because in the intro to cool. the beauty of TV, that's gonna turn into this. This loaf. You just line a cookie sheet. And one of the other good things about these, these there's very little cleanup because this cookie sheet is lined. So you don't all you use like do. one of those meatloaf pans. I don't. Is because there a meatloaf pan? Yeah, I saw. There it. It's are, like you make pound cake in it. Oh. There are. Well, it has holes so that yeah. the fat and oh, okay. juices drip out. Oh. I like to do it this way because mm. what I love about meatloaf is the glaze. The glaze oh, on top okay. is what's so good. So this gives you more surface yes. area. Got it. You hand shape it in. You put this in the oven. Okay. Put it in for 40 minutes. Then you're gonna take it out and then you're gonna take Add the more. Oh, oh, look this at that. This is just hoisin Ooh, sauce. Oh, look at it. You're gonna layer that over. I like a lot of it. Yes, you do. You stick that wow. back. Wow. Yes, what is hoisin do. sauce? Like an A1 sauce? Well, no, it's more like stick your finger. It's like an Asian kind of. Let's say Asian barbecue sauce. It's a little sweet. Like teriyaki. Teriyaki. It's really good. Then you put that back in the oven. Oven and ta-da, it's done. You Wait, can garnish oh, it. When did we add the bread crumbs? The one. bread, oh, panko. You're so good. You caught yeah. me. The panko is what breads what blends it together. Yes. So we should have added that to the beginning. Got it. Um, now, in terms of panko, mm. you can or you can do panko. You can do bread crumbs. You can do quick cooking oats. You can also do crushed crackers. That's so it. it's right. about a half a cup. Now let's do a classic meatloaf. So for this classic meatloaf, we've already got it done. But essentially, we're starting with a meatloaf mix, Beef. which well is beef, it's pork, and it's veal, and then Whoa, it's equal together? parts. You buy it at the grocery store, like it's that? ready done. Meatloaf yep. mix. Oh. It's, a, it's called meatloaf mix. And okay. to that, we're going to add Whoa, just, we're this is add, really a meat lover's well, this, special. Yes, it is. So <laughs> to this, we're going to add Worcestershire sauce, we're going to add mustard, garlic, um, some sour cream. You can either Ketchup add yogurt is, or yeah. sour cream or milk, just to give it some liquid onion. We're gonna make the glaze, which this is just ketchup yeah. and oh. brown sugar. So once you, in some diced parsley, once you mix all that together, add the breadcrumbs, we're just gonna cover it in the glaze. My mom's meatloaf had ketchup on I top. Love Most ketchup. do, it's ketchup love and brown everything. sugar. Some people add vinegar to it, so you oh, add yeah, that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and then I What's like this to make bacon this, pack? you just, it's, it's woven bacon. It's so easy to do, and this would be actually really good for your girls to do, because you know, they it's learn easy to, to yeah. It's so easy. You just fold it back and lay it down, and then on parchment, you just take it. It goes on top of the meat. Wow. Again, meat lovers especially. Yeah, and then you pull it over, tuck it under, bake it, wow. and you're good. Oh my okay. God, wait a minute. Hello, don't you guys run can by try it. that. Hello. Well, you try that. I'm just going to talk a little bit about this other recipe because I think it's so delicious. I tasted it mm. first um, at Watch a meat. restaurant in Lexington, mm -hmm. Kentucky. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Honeywood, oh and the God. chef, Joshua, Smouse makes this. It's absolutely delicious. The sauce, which is fantastic on anything, starts with onions. Wow. Then you add chutney, Ooh, some I love chili chutney. sauce. This is a healthier version, sort of, right? This is all no wait, meat in it. And then, well, no. wait, no, no, no. It's beets. Some. Oh. Um, all these recipes are online, so you can okay. get all those, but this is malt vinegar, and the, right. you're making the sauce, all right? Okay. So you make the sauce, but the important yeah. part is this. The veggies. So it's beets, 
carrots, cheddar cheese, toasted sesame. You're yeah. going to add some brown rice. Wow. Yeah. You're going to add toasted sesame. Uh -huh. You're going to add onion. Yeah. You're going to add all I'm these delicious try ingredients. You're going to mix it up. You're going to add eggs, some soy sauce, all these things. Jenna, make sure you get the sauce because the, the sauce is delicious. Yeah. Hoda, try that too. It's I'm called in. beet loaf. I'm telling you guys, it is so so good. Mm. I Wait, think. I have one question. Really is there healthy. any meat in this one? Zero no. meat. Beets. Okay, that's vegetables. what I wanted to be clear on. It's I was... beets, it's carrots, Hold it's on. onions, and to me... It's seedy and delicious. Mm. Our next guest, putting a Texas twist on dinner this week, here to cook up some delicious pork, chef, owner of Jamali in Fort Worth, Tim Ma. You've been, the, you've been to the show like two dozen times, so you're an old pro at this, but this new restaurant named after your twin daughters? That's right, Jamali. It's my new Italian place that just opened in Fort Worth. All right. All Having right. a lot of fun. So, make it have Monday. And it is Monday, so we'll make ahead some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, this is really, this is really genuinely deep stuff. So uh, this is actually a dish that my wife likes to cook all the time. So it's pork shoulder that we have in here, bone and pork shoulder. Okay. Uh, make a nice spice rub, rub it really well. This is my pork rub that I I sell, but you can just find a good barbecue rub. What's in your oh, season? Well, it's guajillo chilies, fresh rosemary, thyme, salt, wow. pepper, cumin. It's really delicious. Okay. And then we add some poblano chilies that are just raw. Okay. Right. Same with the onion, chopped white onion. Then we're adding a can of chipotle chilies because we like to have it hot and spicy. We do like it hot and spicy. And then a little bit of water. We cover it. it takes six hours. And that's it. You that's can it. Walk away. So this then when it's ready, it comes out like this. I've also made some potatoes that we boil, then we smash them, and then grill them on a plancha. Really? Really quickly, simple, what really call, delicious. What do you call them, those potatoes? Plancha potatoes. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's move you. <laughs> let's move you. <laughs> so the next dish that we're going to make, <laughs> and you say you got she, the already, leftover she already said you got the leftover pork. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Tell me something. Dylan, tell him what you just said in my ear. This is the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> This quesadilla is... It's it should be on that show, the best thing I ever ate. <laughs> so let's okay. explain what you're doing. So let's do it. So here we got a saute pan. I've got some uh, bell peppers. We're going to add in here like this. It's fresh. Some chopped onions, yeah. Really See, you know, vegetables are like people, right? They come in different sizes. They come in different flavors. They come in different personalities. And you want to make sure that when you saute the vegetables, that you uh -huh. give it time to develop. Meaning, we don't want them to be raw, but we, want to, we don't want to cook them all the way. We want the crunch of the vegetable that's why, left. Is that why it tastes so fresh? That's right. So then oh, we so take a tortilla. It. Okay. Let's spread some goat cheese on here like this. Goat cheese. And now you're going to take the beans and spread oh, it on this side. Goat cheese. And then you puree the beans? <laughs> puree the beans, spread on this side. I've this never, side. I, I'm a horrible. I know. It's, it's hard to develop 50-50, but it's like. <laughs> puree with goat cheese. Then we that's put, why it's so good. We put the There's mixture on like this. Oh. Okay. Oh. And then we're going to fold it in half. Look, guys. After. You Did put I do the too cheese. many beans? No, you can actually you can never have too much I know, that's what I'm saying. It's like Hold it in half. Oh, you're right about that. And press it down. Right. Now, and then just flop take it the brush there. and oh, brush it with a little bit of yeah. canola oil. Like so. Now you can do this outside, okay? Okay. If you're at the house, you can do it on the grill. Now put it okay, right on the grill. I feel like I did that perfectly. You obviously did it well, perfectly. You put the wrong side so down. Then, yeah, so you put it. I'm gonna, you know, it's going to look great. Don't worry about me. You just do you. That's the most cooking I've ever seen you do in two years. That's the, best, that's the most cooking I've ever seen her do on the show, by the yeah. way. Now let me go back <laughs> to chewing. <laughs> yes. Back to eating. Really well. So when it yeah. finishes, then you want to put a little bit of the creamy jalapeno sauce. Oh, like. All the jalapeno blades. Okay, we only have a minute left, but we've got ramen noodles to make now. Okay, ramen noodles. So here, same pork, right? Yep. We whip this egg. We okay. add a little salt and pepper because we're gonna we're gonna dice this egg up later. So we okay. add it in here. Let the egg cook all the way through. So we're gonna roll that around. Okay. A little oil. Don't there. worry about it. It'll just keep cooking. Okay. Then we take the pork shoulder mm -hmm. and we drop it in this dressing like this. This What's has in that? green onions, garlic, a little bit of soy sauce, and we mm. let it sit for five minutes. Perfect. Then we take ramen noodles, the cheap ramen noodles that you buy at the store, right? Nice. Cook them. Don't worry about the seasoning. Take the noodles, put them here like this okay. after they're cool. We got some bean sprouts. We got some sake. Mm -hmm. We got some rice wine vinegar. Mm. We got some nori wow, right here. All those Asian and then you take flavors. your egg and you oh, slice you it up after it's cooked. Okay. And it gets like this. You top that on top. And then you take your pork that's been sitting in the juice. Mm. You mix it up. Okay. You act like a great oh, American hero, good. and then it you totally eat it. Changes How the is it? Of everything. This is delicious. It's nice. So three Thanks. different ways. Make Thank ahead you so Monday. Much for these recipes and more, log on to today.com. So good. good. We'll be right back. Uh, when you move to New York Sorry. City. Oh. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope. The COVID vaccines. I know. I know. It's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? 
Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. <laughs> Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We are back with Today Food and more back to school health. That's right. And the start of the new school year here means you're probably looking for some easy recipes that you can just get out on yes. the kitchen table. And here are the few suggestions is children's book author Sarah Thomas. She's on a mission to help kids try to uh, try some new foods in the book. Kalamata's Kitchen. Sarah, it's good to have you. And you know, kids are tricky, right? Yeah. You think it's a good idea to try and get them when you're, they're younger to try new cuisines so that you can maybe set those, those trends early on? Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And yes, absolutely. I mean, I grew up eating these foods. So what we know is that kids do enjoy these foods. It's just a matter of when and how they're exposed to them. So you said this actually smells like your home and it mm, smells yeah. amazing. So what's the first dish you're gonna make? So the first us? dish we're gonna make is chicken ishtu. Okay. Um, this, is a, this is a traditional chicken stew from Kerala, which is where my family is from in India. Okay. Um, and I've already fried off some shallots in this oil, so it already smells really good. Um, yeah, and we start off by just cooking some onions for about a minute. Um, and then if you want, you can take some of those curry leaves off Please. of the branch. Okay. Yeah, Did and we're gonna and where, how do you get these specific leaves? Can you get them from grocery stores? Yeah, I think you can find them in most international markets and Indian okay. stores. You can order them offline. They're super fragrant. I highly recommend getting the fresh ones. Wow. Um, okay. And what? with the curry leaves, we'll add in the ginger and the chilies as well. Okay. Um, we just, things? yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Got it. Um, and we really just like lightly, yes, exactly. Um, you know, if you, you can tone this up or down for your spice how tolerance. How are those chilies for kids? They're not, so again, I grew up yeah. eating it, but if you're not used to eating them, use one. Okay. You know, or seed them it. and de-seed them. Whatever. Okay. Already, this is where you start to add in new flavors for your kids. Exactly Some right. Of those things I've never cooked with before. Yeah. Really? Okay, yeah. this is a great recipe to yeah. try it out. So next up, up, yeah, crush up some cardamom. I would be like, I'm, I'm intimidated. Oh, right? That's a cuisine yes, I don't know. Yes, perfect. That's perfect. It's relatively easy. Oh. Just like that? Yeah, it's perfect. Cardamom. What yep, throw those cardamom. in. And you can add in two of those cinnamon sticks and some of the cloves as well. Okay. And this is where it starts to smell really, really good. Yes. When do we add the chicken? Wait, Sarah, did I miss this? What's that? Oh, not yet. Not okay. yet. So now we're going to put in the chicken okay. after these have been cooking for a little chicken? bit. Go all in. Go all, right. all in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this we're just going to cook so skinless, it's... Skinless, boneless. Yeah. yeah, skinless, boneless cubes. You can use bone in too. Right. It adds a really nice flavor. Okay. And it's um, all in and one we're just, pot, pretty much? Exactly right. You can't beat thank that. You. you cannot beat that. Um, just okay. cook this for two to three okay. minutes till it... Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Till the chicken's lightly cooked. Oh, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. You're like, why are we... I know. No. The point is to eat it and enjoy it, right? Okay. So get but this right is a one-pot dish, then, this right? This is a one-pot dish. Oh, wow, great. So after Here the chicken go. has cooked for a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Oh, I want those first impressions. Yum. What do we think? Oh, so good, oh right? Gosh, potatoes in? Yes, mm. so potatoes mm. in. That is explosion. A little bit oh. of vinegar. And it's, right? you oh, know, sure. it's really like minimal effort yeah. for so yeah. much flavor. And it's such a good way to introduce oh kids to this cuisine. What's this Yum. next dish? Let's move down before oh, we run out of time. Sure. So next up, this is my mom's dal recipe. So mm. this is one of the first foods that I grew up eating. Okay. Um, and, you know, this is, a, this is a staple that's enjoyed by Indian families all over. And what we're going to do today, um, it's actually the recipe that's found in the back of the book as well. It oh, inspires good. Kalamata and Al Dente's adventure in the story. Okay. Um, I was really inspired as a kid by the sounds and scents mm. of, of spices going. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is temper or bloom our spices. Look at that. Ooh. Yes. Vibrant. What you know, spices are you using? So these are mustard seeds. And they're popping. And, yes, they are popping like fireworks. I which love is how it. Kalamata eh? hears them in the book. Um, so actually, as soon as they start popping, you're good to go. Um, and we're going to add in some garlic, chilies, uh, and ginger here as well. Ooh, yeah. We're really just going to cook these until, just for a little bit, because I like that kind of oh, fresher flavor. Yes. And that smell, this is like a really engulfing smell. Yummy. I 
I remember this being like what my house smelled like all the time. So thanks, mom. I was really lucky. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so we really just cook this for a minute, let everything get kind of uh, lightly browned, okay. um, but that's and what it. what is this that you're putting in? What is that? That is actually just the dried lentils, ah. right? So the nice thing about dal lentil. is like you cannot mess this up. Okay. You can use any pulses. And it's so it's delicious. It's so good, right? It's, it's, it's so good. I've never anything like it. I love that. Really? No, these are so good. It is so All good. Right. And then... But it's like a grilled cheese dipping in tomato kind of vibe, oh, you know, man. comfort food. Yes, it's absolutely <laughs> comfort food. Are you dipping it in that? Yeah. You know, I've never actually done that, but dal on toast is a great thing. It's, it's great. I use leftover hey, dollar hey, So we want to thank you. That, of course, that recipe, again, is in the back of the book, Kalamata's Kitchen. That book out right now. Yes. Sarah, great job. Thank we'll you. be back. But book. first, this is today on FAC. So Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Good morning, everybody. This is an excited book. So much good stuff coming up this fall. Let's kick it off, guys. Are you ready? Welcome to today. We're so happy that you're joining us. You can't spend your whole time trying to run another country by proxy. Do you believe schools should mandate the vaccine? I believe everybody who's eligible to be vaccinated should get vaccinated. We are going to reflect on the extraordinary life and career of our friend Willard Scott. Obviously, we want to remember all those amazing people who are lost, but let's celebrate them. You guys have new neighbors up in space. We did see them for just a few seconds. Zero gravity is where things really take off. Look, Ma, no hand. And that's not quite the show. We have got to see this. <laughs> Wrong way back! Akuna. Nutella. Don't adjust your tongue. You're so obsessed with me. Are you guys seeing this? This is so boring, and you can cut this out. But give it up, the one and only Keith Urban. This is today on NBC. Hoo-wee! September sure was a busy month here in Studio 1A. We covered so much, so we thought, why not bring you behind the scenes to let you in on the TV magic? So over the next half hour, in what we're calling the making of today, we're going to pull back the curtain, <laughs> which sounds odd, and show you how the big moments on the broadcast come together each morning. And what better place than to start on the Great White Way, Broadway. After 18 months of theaters being dark, Broadway is back. And today was part of the Great White Way's big reopening. We lifted the curtain at three different shows and made it all come together for the next morning. So how did it all happen? Check it out. Hey guys, look what we're doing. We're behind the scenes. We're taking you right behind the scenes of Broadway. Broadway it's so go. much fun. Backstage, Yay! all of it. Broadway is back, baby, and we got to be there for a very exciting moment. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go! Along with our cameras, producers, and a few special guests. What do you say about Broadway? As Hoda and Savannah waited for their first interview at Wicked, Can I do the witches first? Savannah and daughter Vale entertained the team. With their lyrics memorized, they were ready to interview the real Glinda and Elphaba until New York City sounds got in the way. How do you feel, girls? Oh my God. Well, that's a New York welcome right there. That is how we feel. Ah, all the things you don't see on TV. Meanwhile, my producer, Erica Glass, set up with our crew at Hamilton. So just to catch you up on what we're doing, we were just here for the ham for ham, they had a ticket lottery that happened before each show, so we shot that. Now we're just waiting for Alan Craig to get here, and we're just setting up. There's lights, there's sound, there's cameras, we're ready. And with that, we hit the ground running, interviewing. Are you excited? Yeah! And making jokes with the fans outside. Paul Roker tonight is Hamilton. Wow, that would be amazing. No, no, <laughs> I'm breaking news to you, like, this is happening. After no one believed that, we went to the theater balcony for more interviews where I had a surreal moment of my own. Just for a moment, you know how few people have been up I know. on the marquee I know. of the Richard Rogers Theater. It gets no better this than is, that. This is, wow! Hamilton's back. Woo! New York City's back. Broadway's Look at all these back. people. 
They're streaming. Oh. I mean, Yes! Are you ready? My people! My people! There is part of that. My people! Oh, I love this country. Anticipation for the show building is our cameraman, Bill Angelucci, capturing it all. Here we are, getting ready to go here. And as we signed off at Hamilton... Got the ticket, got the playbill, got a Hamilton fizz. Woohoo! Broadway's back, baby. Jenna and Carson were just getting started at the Lion King. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Right? Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. With producer Christine Morea taking charge. What do we do here? Uh, we're just a little stand up, we're here like. At the Lion King. We're getting ready to open. We're about okay. to open the doors. Can't wait. Okay. We are here at the Lion King, Minskoff Theater, New York. Our crew filming every moment as Jenna and Carson pumped up the crowd and kept them hyped as they walked through those famous doors. Enjoy the show! Have fun, everybody. Get some popcorn. And Broadway's back! Yeah! Broadway's back! And with that, Broadway was officially open. Who's gonna know your name? What's your name, man? Alexander. But it doesn't mean our work is done. We are loading our footage that we just shot at The Lion King. I'm going to rush it over to 30 Rock after this where another producer will then screen and write this. And then we have a team of two producers who are cutting this overnight to air tomorrow. So it takes a village. Christine gets the footage to producer Kate Redding who edits through the night. It is 2.45 in the morning. The shows have long ended and all the crowds have gone home, but now it's my turn to do my job. I'm working with another producer and two editors we are all working together. We have this script. We've got about five hours until this is gonna be on the air. Making it all come together. Last night, we all had the honor of helping reopen the doors on the Great White Way. With the best team in the business. Every day, our team proves what it looks to be like defying gravity. Up next, we're gonna do that literally. Join me and our crew as we talk about taking flight in zero gravity. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. False narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back. You may have seen my flight of a lifetime in zero gravity, a trip some 30,000 feet above the ground that affords you a weightless experience without leaving Earth. And as it's about weightlessness, I'm all for it. I caught up with our crew after to find out how they made this story soar. On TV, my flight in zero gravity may have looked effortless. Look, Ma, no hand. But for the crew behind the camera, this unique and weightless journey was a heavy lift. How'd you get the assignment? It kind of fell in my lap maybe two days before we actually got on the plane. I just got a call from my senior producer and said, hey, do you want to go in to a zero G flight without Roker? And when you get a question like that, you don't say no. It normally takes a couple of weeks at least of planning. Here you had two days. What went into that? You might not know this, but we weren't actually clear to get on the plane until about 30 minutes before you arrived. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it really came down to the wire there. 
Once on board, our next concern, motion sickness, especially since flights like these have been dubbed vomit comets. I was surprised that they said most cameramen get sick. If any of us get sick, the shoot's ruined. Forget about the shoot being ruined, the flight's ruined. The, yeah. Not and, to and mention our flight suits. Exactly, exactly. And I don't think anybody wants to puke on Al Roker. Or does so, Al Roker want to puke on anybody else? Well, I mean, then I think we just have to sit back and deal with it. You're I, making me nauseous, actually. Yeah. Pushing over, zero one. As it turns out, floating in zero gravity is surprisingly chaotic. When I thought, okay, Al's going to go weightless, it didn't register in my mind that I'm also going to be weightless. Suddenly, I'm floating too. <laughs> just turns the whole thing on its head, literally. My view of the cameramen floating around and watching them struggle was just very funny. It was difficult for them to actually do their job to begin with because they can't really look at what they're shooting. They're just kind of pointing it in your direction and hoping for the best. And because the plane flies in waves, we had less than 30 seconds at a time to make weightless magic. This panic sets in that I have 30 seconds to capture this and I can't control my body right now. This is one of those where you think you can prep, but no one can actually tell you what you need or what you can experience. Did I mention the roar of the plane kept us from hearing each other? Mic drop! I didn't hear anything he said the entire time we were in that airplane. It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! So at that moment, I have no idea he's saying that, but his commentary was great. Are you happy with the way the, the piece turned out? I love the piece. I think it's great. One of the things that I wanted to put in was that the first hour of the flight is a totally normal flight. I sat down and I knocked out uh, because that's what I do when I fly. That is another thing that I wanted to mention in the spot, and I just wasn't sure, honestly, if you were going to be okay with me telling people that you fell asleep on the flight. Because I just thought, again, going back to how normal this thing is, like, Al Roker fell asleep, like he was totally zenned out. Glad I had our crew along for that out-of-this-world experience. But you know who was really floating on cloud nine for one assignment? Our own Chanel Jones. Earlier this month, Chanel was able to talk to stars at the Met Gala. Here's her behind-the-seams look at fashion's biggest night. Set it with nearly as many stars that light up the night sky, the Met Gala shines bright as celebrities showcase their stellar looks on the red carpet. And I got the chance to greet them with that question we all want answered. Can you tell us who you're wearing? Tell us who you're wearing. Tell us who you're wearing. But not far from those world-famous steps of New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, my Monday began just like any other at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Good morning and welcome to the third hour of today on this Monday, September 13th, and we a date I had circled on my calendar for weeks. So I just finished third hour today. And now it is Met Gala time. So I've got my hair out. We're going to do something fun. Um, shall we start the journey? Let's do it. I'm with Bianca. She's doing my hair. Say hi. So we are walking to the car. We're going to go to my house and get ready. Um, I feel like, am I nervous? I don't know if I'm nervous. I don't know how, to, des I don't know how to describe what I'm feeling. But um, excited. Excited. OK, yay. Exciting. We're back in the corner of my living room, the back of the house. Um, so shall we begin? Yes. After two hours in hair and makeup, my glam squad worked its magic. And I had a trick of my own, mixing couture with a little bit of comfort as I made my way to the Met. I literally had to bring flip-flops and walk because traffic is so bad. <laughs> so across the street, I'm changing into my heels. And true story, Kathy Lee Gifford did one of She gave it to me. Of course, I couldn't cover fashion's biggest night without an entourage of my own. A crew led by veteran Today Show producer Yael Federbush. So I'm super excited. I'm going to the Met Gala. I'm on my way. In her more than 20 years with Today, Yael has traveled the world, meeting some famous faces along the way. But she'd never covered a red carpet event until now. We have to check in and show our COVID vaccine cards and um, get cleared for our credentials. We waited behind the scenes with all the reporters for about an hour or so, and now we're all going in one at a time into the tent. Let's do it. Once inside, we quickly took a look around before cramming into our designated space. 
corralled next to other media outlets, I had some time to catch up with a friend. I'm talking to my friend Joelle, <laughs> who's across the way. Before the heels came off once again. Ah, oh my God, so much better. Then some last minute accessories for our setup. Just a trip to Michael's, no big deal. Watch this, sister. Life in a fishbowl as the guests began pouring in. With the party officially started, it was up to me to get the attention of each celebrity. You were my inspiration tonight. I kid you not. Oh my gosh. I hope I did you proud. No, you did. I literally, I hope I did you proud. A fangirl moment from an unforgettable night. I couldn't wait to share with today's show viewers the next morning. It was my first time covering the Met Gala at the Metropolitan Museum of Art here in New York City. It really was a good time. Ms. Jones, thanks so much for letting us in on the secrets on how all that came together. Coming up, we're going to give away some set secrets through a tour of Studio 1A. Don't go away. Controversy in South Lake tonight after teens posted a racist video. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. My children were told Rosa Parks is dead. You all have to sit in the back of the bus. But when the school board presented its plan, this small town fight ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative of rampant racism. Shame. This is South Lake, an NBC News podcast. All episodes available now. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So it's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Here in our house, Studio 1A, we're going to give you insider access by taking you on a tour of our set. And I got to tell you, this correspondent is, is one of my all-time favorites. Me. This is my favorite part of the studio. Uh, it's, we call it the data wall. This is where I do uh, all my weather. We actually ended up going to Best Buy, and uh, it was fantastic. Got this deal. No, we didn't really. It's very special. It's, and I just kind of touch it, and boom! We got it for the election last year. This is far bigger than what Steve Kornacki has. Kornacki's got screen envy. All right, he's got the fancy khakis, but he doesn't have this. That's right. We can just do it, and we can put anything in here, but it, it really is terrific. So every morning before 7 a.m., I meet with our, our climate unit to discuss what we're going to share on the broadcast, and then uh, we go over the graphics, and, and I've got the, this great team of folks, uh, Don Sunikas, uh, Catherine Prosev, Brian Van Aken, uh, usually from day to day, that come up with these graphics and, and design it, and, and we've got a lot of action and color. It's, it's really fantastic. Uh, and I can change them like this, or uh, I can have uh, Don Sunikas, who's usually in there, uh, change it like that. Boom. And so it's like it's like magic. Uh, here's a fun fact. Uh, Studio 1A is also now home to NBC Nightly News. And guess what? Lester Holt is actually paying me. That's right. I'm making some long green from a long Lester. I love it. All right. Now, our, our show has been in Studio 1A since 1994. We love the space, but we actually like you. We go through some renovations every few years. That's right. Uh, we started at the beginning of the month. 
The contractors disappeared for five months, uh, and then when they brought the cabinets in, they didn't fit. Uh, we got this new desk. Uh, it used to be a huge oval, but now it's a little uh, semicircle. And it, here's the thing. We've got little monitors in here that uh, we can uh, pick up. We, we can watch Peacock or anything during the show. It's great. Uh, we also redid our floors. Now, we do have uh, some wood paneling, uh, but we also have this white kind of marbled look. And, and you may remember, for those of you who uh, have that memory, our floor rotates. Oh, Gerard, could you start? Gerard's one of our, our main stage folks. Uh, the, the floor rotates. Look at that. Hey, this is fantastic. I'm just going to stay here. Here's a fun fact. Gerard could actually get this thing up to about 50 miles an hour and people just start flying off. Whoever is able to hang on gets to actually keep their job. Come here, come here, come here. This is the part you don't really see. This is, this is, uh, okay, that's, that's Gerard and, and who, who actually spins the monitor. Uh, there's uh, uh, Zach, who's our stage manager. And back there, that's Nate Congleton. Photo Nate, you might recognize him. He takes all the pictures. Uh, he's taking one right now. How, how meta is that? We're taking a picture of, of Nate taking a picture of us. It's a, hey, Gerard, spin this bad boy one more time. I love it. Here we go. I'm putting on my top hat. I love this. All right. Well, we got to get out of here. So we'll see you a little later. Oh, I had so much fun on that spinning floor. Uh, you know who else has a fun spin on things? Why, Hoda and Jenna, especially when they're making TikTok videos. They're on the TikTok. Social contributor Donna Farrison helped the ladies rack up more than 11 million views on their account. So what goes into the making of a viral video? See for yourself. Hey everybody, Donna here in Studio 1A, and I'm going to take you behind the scenes at how I help Hoda and Jenna make their TikToks every day. So come follow me. Hoda, guess what? What? We have our own TikTok page! Okay, do you guys remember when we first launched our TikTok? Yes. What was your first reaction? What? <laughs> we haven't said that in a while. Well, we you know what? Reaction. We kind of thought we were hitting, we were getting cool. <laughs> it was happening. We were hip. Both uh -huh. of us were like uh -huh. look, looking to see what yeah. the dance is. Yeah, and we were shaking our head too. Booties. And we just fell off the chair. To get inspo and see what's trending, I scroll through TikTok every night to see what might work for the ladies. Some of my favorite TikToks to make are with the celebs we have in our studio. Most recently, Addison Ray. Two, one. Why are you so obsessed with me? Oh no. Okay, first stop in my pitch process to the ladies is doing it right now, three minutes before air. Let's see if we have time. Oh yeah. I love her. No, we can be her. We could do her. Wow. Swipe to the next one. Okay, that looks more involved. Hold on. Yeah. So basically, you can choose your rendition. I like the first one. Yeah, I think the first one too. Okay, I'm in the green room now, and neither Hoda, Jenna, nor I are particularly great dancers. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your choreographed dancing? Zero. Oh, you're not giving us a four? Four. Because we have to have rhythm. Okay, one. I'm gonna try out the TikTok dance that I want them to do first, just to you know play fair. So, right after my segment, it's time to film the TikTok. Let's do it. So I'm gonna do a countdown clock, so you're gonna right. hear three, two, and one. The booty, like crazy. Yeah, crazy. Um, start, wait, okay, three, two, one. Really yeah, terrible. the Hoda and Jenna spin to it. How'd you guys feel about doing that TikTok? Well, uh, one thing I know without looking at it, we're ridiculous <laughs> and embarrassed. I felt, yeah, embarrassed, I felt <laughs> old, I felt like a hag. <laughs> no, you did not. No! Davies <laughs> repulse. No. What do you guys think about the TikTok process in general? Are you into it or are you over it? No, we like TikTok. We like it, we don't understand it still. <laughs> we like it and we feel like we have lots of content that no one's interested in. <laughs> do, do 
Just, just, by the way, we keep putting out content. Tell the people now. Will you follow us? Put on us. Who are we talking to? <laughs> Hey, should I join TikTok? Well, I don't know. I, I still have to get on that worldwide interweb thing. Anyway, coming up, I'm going to answer some of your questions after the break. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring is from, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative. Shame. This is South Lake. All episodes available now. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> bad. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. We've given you an inside look at what goes on behind the scenes. Now it's time to dive into a look behind my routines in a little segment we're calling ask it all. I'm answering viewer questions and nothing is off the table. Hmm. How many pairs of glasses do you have? The internet is obsessed with Al Roker's new glasses. I've got about 10 pair, I think. My old ones, these were the old aviator glasses. Does anything say hipness more? Your glasses are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Work in the industry. How do you lean on each other professionally? When we first met, we were both here at NBC. Very soon after, she left to go to ABC. I think we've each made each other better. So I've helped her find her inner lightness, and she's helped me be a little more serious. Like right now, I'm not wearing pants, and she told me to do that. I never get to really see Deborah Roberts at work. I've never gotten to see her do a live shot before. Oh my gosh, I saw it <laughs> over there. Bye-bye. Uh, winds of 150 miles per hour. When on location covering extreme weather, how do you stay safe and get the job done? We have an amazing crew. They know what to bring. They know where to set up so that we maximize our safety. Don't you wish you had your weight back? Right about now, I do. Oh. Hey, Al. For as long as you've worked here, what is the one thing that you're most grateful for about your job? I am grateful for this job. Coming to you on a dusty road. All you do is add weight. So it means something like this. <laughs> an icon. Of all the places you've traveled throughout the years, what's been your most favorite? I've been to Greenland. I've been to Iceland. We've been to Japan. We've been to China. We've been to Russia. I love them all. There's always something great about those places, especially when you get to meet folks, different cultures and, and different foods. And yet the thing that still brings us together is that I think we're, we're still very similar, that we still love our families. We still love our food and we like meeting new people. in the morning, what are the first three things you do? I guess you can figure out one. You can probably figure out the second. I talk to my meteorologist, Don Sunikas, and, and get the forecast, and then we work on that. And then I go downstairs, and we go over the graphics, and depending on how long the first two take, then I go to work. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. We hope you'll keep those questions coming because good news, the making of today will air on our Today All Day streaming channel every month. 
Is that a good thing? Well, you decide. If you want more behind-the-scenes access to Today, sign up for Today Insider. You'll get a weekly email that includes early access to steals and deals, giveaways, and so much more. Just head to today.com slash insider. Now, if you thought September was busy, get ready for October. And if you think October is going to be busy, November is going to be off the chain. We'll take you along for the ride as we prep for International Day of the Girl, our Halloween extravaganza, and so much more. Until then... See you then. I'm Dylan Dreyer, and today we're working out with Marcia from Obey Fitness. She's teaching us Pilates to help strengthen our abs and our legs. So roll out that mat and let's get moving. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, boom. That's your shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We're together to do a 10-minute workout, Pilates abs. You don't need anything. You, me, gravity, roll out your magic carpet. Let's get down to business. Take a seat, right? Knees bent, feet flat, hands get tucked into the knee creases. You're gonna rock it back or roll it back. Let's do that. Let's roll it back, keep it nice and smooth. And then you're gonna pull those elbows right to the side. Again, just like that, scooping my waist, rolling it. Smooth, smooth operator. There it is, elbows wide to the side. Stay in your abs. One more time, take it back and then bring it home. Here comes the level up. The hands come in towards your sternum. I want you to roll it back. Oh yes. And then rock it up. Exactly. Adding breath here. Inhale, it goes back. And then exhale, it comes up. Now if you want more challenge, you walk those heels a little bit closer to your bum. Ooh, and then you'll feel it, okay? Now here's the deal. I want you to roll it back and hold it here. You're gonna spiral over to your right side and then bring it back to your center. Again, like that, to your right side. Ooh, and then bring it back to your center. You got three more just like that. Making sure the hands stay in line with the heart so the hands are not going on a mission on their own, right? It's like together, together, no matter the weather, okay? So now I want you to come on over to your right side and stay here. Things are starting to burn, that's A-okay. I want you to go back an inch and come up an inch. Go back an inch and up an inch. So you're right where the work is, all the way clocked in, okay? Water breaks are allowed, honey, but nobody's going home. Show me the last two. Not yet, because we got things to do. Last and final one, I want you to take it back there, go ahead, square yourself, and then bring it all the way home. Same deal, other side. I want you to round it back, hold it there. You find your edge, you own it. And then you're gonna spiral over towards your left side, and then bring it back home. So again, I'm checking in that my knees are not trying to get all shifty on me, because a shifty knee, honey, she's unreliable. You need those knees to be reliable, honey. A steady force. Go ahead, spiral over and stay there. Back an inch, up an inch. You know what to do if you want more challenge. The heels come closer to your butt. If you need less, walk the heels further away. Right? You gauge it for yourself, but you stay at the job, honey. We got two more. 
Yes, last and final, one more. Square it forward. I want you to extend the legs, flex through all 10 toes. Extend the arms, and with control, darling, control. Roll all the way down into the mat. For the full roll up, arms up towards the ceiling. Take an inhale, you're gonna roll it up. And then exhale, round it forward. Now take note how we pass through the half roll down. Here it is right here. Remember the knees are no longer bent, they're straight, but this is that moment. Okay, so it's like going through a toe, right? Inhale, you're up. Exhale forward. I say it's like pass and go and collecting $200, right? So by the end of this, you're all stacked up, coins on coins, ready, ready, ready with your money. Hold it there. As long as you're passing through that toll. Now, if you miss it, right, it's probably because your abs aren't scooped, right, or you're not reaching. So I need you to do both. The abs are going to pull you back. The fingertips are going to reach you forward. We reach forward for what? Our goals, our dreams, all the things that we want. We don't reach back, honey. No, we don't. Okay, last and final one. I want you to reach it forward, hold it forward, pulse it forward for three, pulse forward for two, pulse forward for one. I want you to take an inhale, start rolling it, rolling it, rolling it back. One bone at a time until you land on the mat. And when you do, stay down. Now, if you need to recenter yourself, recenter yourself. Make it happen, keep it cute. I want you to bring those legs into your tabletop position, lift the arms up, curl up to the tips of your shoulder blades. And for the hundred, y'all, we're gonna do about 50 of them, but it's happening. I want you to take an inhale, two, three, four, Five, exhale two, three, four, five. Inhale two, three, four, five. Exhale two, three, four, five. Friends, this is real air coming into your lungs and real air leaving your lungs, okay? Every single time. Take one more deep breath in and a deep breath out. Hold it here for the single leg stretch. Right leg pulls in, grab that shin. Left leg's going out on the high diagonal. Now that's an active leg, make sure that's true. Go ahead, switch sides. Boom, and then switch. That's it, and then switch. Who says you can't do a lot of work in a little bit of time? Y'all, this is deep, mindful stuff. So if you only got 10 minutes, the future is a snack bite. So don't sweat the small stuff, right? Take your little bit of time, take your whole lot of effort, and make some magic happen. Come on, we got two more. Exhale, exhale, last one. That's it, blow the air all the way out, bend the knees in, lower your head. I want you to go ahead and stack both hands behind your head. Some of y'all like to use the jazz fingers, but unfortunately, they're not gonna support you for this. So go ahead and make a real stack, okay? Listen, I'm not mad at a little jazz hand, but we'll save it for later, all right? On that note, knees are in your tabletop, curl it up, all right? Don't close, don't close it on your head. You wanna keep those elbows nice and wide. Send the legs out on the high diagonal, they're strong and straight. Flex through your feet. Point through your toes and then bend it in. Again, you're gonna send it out. Flex, point, and bend it in. You got three more just like that. If you want more challenge, you take the legs a little bit lower. The problem is, or the, goal, the thing is, you don't wanna go so low that you get an arch in your spine. You wanna keep those abs in so that the spine stays connected, okay? So buyer beware, that's you. Checking out the scene, making sure. All right, last and final one. Go ahead, flex and then point. Now keep the legs pointed, right leg lifts up. Go ahead, grab it for your scissors, that's it. Left leg's gonna find 45 degrees or a little bit lower, but this is an active leg. Don't let it be like, ooh, inactive, honey. Activate her, she wants to do the job, and then you'll switch sides. That's it, switch sides. Keep going, now my eyes are on my abs. Yes, it's easy to look up at your feet and be like, oh, pedicure, I love you so much, but I want you to look at your abs, right? And make sure they're doing what they need to be doing, okay? Elbows are wide, abs are pulling in deep. Show me four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, bend those knees in. You're going back to having your hands stacked behind your head. I want you to curl it up, extend the legs up, externally rotate them, heels are together, toes are apart. Go ahead, lower the legs down to 45 degrees. Open them to the width of the mat. Pull them together and then take three counts to lift them up. Wow, again, just like that. Lower, open, zip, and then lift, lift, lift. It's like Dear Diary, why are my legs so heavy? Don't worry about it, keep them working. Yes, a long working leg is a lighter leg, okay? If the leg becomes dead weight, then yeah, it's gonna feel a lot heavier than it should. Okay, we got two more. Stay with it, fam. Lower, open, zip, lift, 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 last and final, see? Anything for a little while. Lift it, lift it, lift it. Bend the knees in and lower your head. Last but not least, we got crisscross. It's for those internal and external obliques so we can feel fabulous all of the time. Go ahead, the legs are coming into tabletop. Curl it up. Left leg stays in tabletop, right leg goes out on the high diagonal. Come on up and over. Hey, and then it's your other side. Yep, it's your other side, come on. 
Now my legs are holding their place in the center. My body is wrapping around itself. Ooh, deep work, you guys. Little bit of time, whole lot of effort, whole lot of benefits. Come on, we got three, three. You got two, two. You got one, and one. I want you to bend those knees in and rest. Last but not least, friends, we're gonna go into a little teaser, right? Ooh, don't be afraid. Here you go, hands go in the knee creases. Keep your legs zipped together. I want you to rock on up to sit. Now once you get seated, Bring your legs into a tabletop position. So this is gonna be our home base, all right? Call it home. Hold it here for three, hold it two. I'm lifting my chest up for one, and then I'm gonna roll it down. And I'm gonna rock it right back up. Lifting my chest, that is the name of the game, y'all. Lift it up. Three, two, one. Again, I'm gonna roll it back, and then I'm gonna rock it up and lift it up. Hold it up, three. Holding two, holding one. Now here's the deal, you can stick with this version, or you add a little spice to your life. Check it out, no hands. All right, now my legs are gonna stay, my body's gonna roll down. All right, I'm gonna curl my chin to my chest, reach myself up, and this time, extend my legs. If you cannot straighten your legs, keep your knees bent. I'm not gonna take away any of your cool points, trust me. Otherwise, here we are, three, two, one. The knees are gonna bend, the body's gonna roll back down. I got two more, okay? The magic number here is three. It's nice to know what the magic numbers are, right? You're like, ooh, how much longer we got to go? We got one more, okay, here it is. Reach it all the way up, hold it up. You got three, you got two, you got one. Now the legs are gonna stay strong and straight. The body is gonna roll itself down. Legs are staying, arms are staying. Curl up into yourself. You got three, two, one. You're gonna lower yourself back down. Two more, lift it up, hold it up. Keep it up, ow. Lower all the way back down, last and final. Lift it all the way up and hold it up. Leave the legs, melt the body into the mat, and for the end of your 100, vigorously pump as you inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. If you need less, you bring your legs in the tabletop, okay? You can also lift your legs a little higher towards the ceiling. Wherever you are, two more giant breaths, inhale, and exhale, stay with me, family, inhale. And exhale, two, three, four, five. Go ahead, bend those knees in. I want you to rock on up to sit. Once you're seated, cross over your legs. Come into a quadruped position. I want you to tuck your knees, hover it up for three, hover it up for two, hover it up for one. Go ahead, press those legs strong and straight into your downward facing dog. Walk your fingertips all the way back towards your toes. Soften the knees and then roll up through the spine, stacking those bones up nice and tall. And when you make it to the top, your top. Remember to stand tall and stay tall until we're together again. Thank you, fam. Good morning. Welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Please. You are <laughs> bad. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Some experts say that this bill still isn't enough. Do you accept that criticism? There's been a ton of confusion from the CDC. Can we try to clear some of this up? Is America safer today with the Taliban in charge of Afghanistan? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press.
What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We are together to do a 10-minute workout, Pilates legs. You don't need anything. It's you, it's me, it's gravity. You're gonna roll out your magic carpet and we're getting down to business. Take a seat, friends. Once you're seated, I want you to lie down on your mat on your side. So you're sideline, your elbow, your shoulder, and your hip are gonna align with the back edge of the mat. I want your knees to bend, right? So you're like a letter L here. Your shins are flush with the front edge of the mat. Okay, and then this top hand is gonna be six inches in front of your chest. Go ahead, you're gonna lift this leg up and then lower it right back down, but just come to a hover, right? Again, you're gonna lift and then you're gonna lower. Keep going. Now, as I lift my leg, I'm not rotating it, right? It's easy to get this knee to look up at the ceiling, but I want it to maintain the, the, the look at front, okay? Amazing, keep going. Now, I'm pressing up with my thigh outer thigh, and I'm pulling in with my inner thigh. That's it. Show me the last two. Great, last and final one. Amazing, I want you to hold it up here and keep it up here. Now I'm gonna internally rotate that leg, knee to knee, and then externally rotate the leg toe to toe. My toes are actually gonna press together. Again, knee to knee, and then toe to toe. And you're probably wondering, but Marmar, why should we press our toes? Because it gets you right to where the magic is happening. It's like, oop, activate, boop, and you're gonna start to feel that little muscle starting to cook up. It's a good, it should, look, it's a good feeling. <laughs> Give or take, right? It's a bird, it's a sweet bird, right? Keep going, so I'm pressing, right? I'm internally rotating and then I'm externally rotating. I got two more of these. Uh-huh, and then last and final. Now I'm gonna keep my toes pressing together and I'm gonna pulse this knee back like I'm pressing up against the wall and I'm trying to push that wall out of my way because the wall doesn't want me to be great. And I'm like, you're not gonna get me, honey. I got things to do, I got goals, okay? And all of them involve greatness, darling, so out of my way. Keep going, you got four more. You got three more. Show me two more. Show me one more, now hold it here. I want you to keep this leg externally rotated and lift it up like you're pulling it behind your shoulder, right? And then again, you're gonna tap those toes back together. Again, lift this leg, pull it behind your shoulder, that's the intention, right? Yes, your legs have to have intentions. Otherwise, they might come out here doing all the kinds of crazy things. And again, you wanna be centered, you wanna be focused on what is going on, right? And of course, the why. It's like, what is it, why? Show me the last two. Uh-huh, here it is. Show me the last one. Now here's the deal, you're gonna pull that knee behind you as you did, and you're gonna pulse it back there for eight. Pulse it back for seven. Try not to let the knee roll forward or back. Just keep it in that lane. Right, the realm of the reasonable. Show it to me, we got three, we got two, we got one, hold it here. Now I want you to bring this leg so it's aligned with the other leg, nice and stacked up. You're gonna straighten the leg out underneath you. You're gonna sweep it to the front, and then you're gonna brush it to the back. Again, sweep it to the front, and then brush it to the back. So that knee, that leg, excuse me, is cruising at hip height. Yes, it's not lower, it's not higher, it's just right in that groove. Imagine you're kind of sliding that leg across the coffee table right? And you're like, you got to get that remote control. So you're like, ooh, child, nobody else in the room is just you. So your toes, you're like, listen, I hired you guys to do a job. I need you to get me that, that remote control. So you reach across that table, show me two more. You got two more chances to get that remote control, or you're going to be stuck watching this same show. <laughs> Last and final one. I want you to pull it in front of you and hold it in front of you. Now here's where the magic happens. You're going to flex, you're going to point, you're going to lower, you're gonna lift, again, flex and point. That's right, lower down and lift it up. Now every time you lower, the leg is not actually resting on the other leg, nor is the leg resting on the floor. The leg is completely focused on working. That's it. Show me two more. I know, things are starting to cook up. It's okay, last and final, one more. I want you to hold it up here. Now circle out like you're tracing a golf ball. Small, small, small. Yes, uh-huh, keep going. Yes, the leg is long, the hips are stacked. Show me three, show me two, show me one. We're taking that in reverse, come on. And seven, yes, for six. Abs are still pulling in, tailbone reaches long. Last three, last two, last and final one. That leg is cooked, bend that knee, lower it down. Press yourself on up, and friends, we're gonna swing our legs around and get right into the other side. 10 minutes, it's a little bit of time, right? But who says we can't get the maximum result in 10 minutes? Go on, lift that leg up 
and then lower the leg down. Uh -huh. Now the leg comes down again to a hover. So it's not actually touching that other thigh. Why? Because you want this leg to develop some sort of independence, right? Why are you always leaning on this leg to get through life? Honey, empower yourself to do what you gotta do. Show it to me, we got three more. That's it, show me two more. My abs are still working, dare I say. Ooh. Last and final, one more. Now here it comes, internally rotated knee to knee. Externally rotated toe to toe and they're gonna press. Imagine if you have those snapping buttons. I want you to snap those guys together and you gotta hear that snap. Mm. It's like, here it is, oh snap, uh-huh. And the booty's like, oh snap, yes. That is what we're going for. Keep it rocking. We got three. We have two. Abs are still in and up. Yes, they are. Last and final one. Now the toes are gonna press together, they're gonna stay together. I want you to pulse that knee back. Eight, seven, remember the goal is greatness. Six and five, and you are not taking no for an answer. No, we are not. Last four, last three, last and final two, and one, hold it here. Now pull that knee behind your shoulder. Boom, and then again, oh snap. <laughs> again, pull it behind you, and there you go. Boop, show me six more. It's like, oh, give me a count. This way I know when it's almost over, darling. We're still breathing, we're still smiling. Life is still cute, honey, we're still cute. Show me the last two. Almost there, family. Last and final one. Now I want you to pull that knee behind you. Keep it there. Pulse it behind you. Eight and seven. You got it for six and five. Try to keep the shape of the leg the same. Last two. Last and final one. Now go ahead, stack these legs. And then I want you to extend that leg underneath you. And then you'll sweep it to the front. Underneath you, it reaches. And then you sweep it to the front. Now as you sweep to the front, again, the tailbone stays long. The butt's gonna maybe wanna curl under like a scared dog when they're hiding their tail, right? But you gotta keep that tailbone nice and long. Last two, nice, nice. Last and final one, hold it here. Now you're gonna flex, and then you're gonna point. Uh-huh, again, you're gonna flex. Did you get the remote control is the question. Or are you still watching that tired show that doesn't have the good jokes, right? <laughs> Last two, here it is. Last and final one. All right, now you're gonna lower the leg down and you're gonna lift the leg up. Ooh, again, lower, I know, the leg is like, I'm over it. Dear Marmar, I'm over it. Stay with me, okay, stay with me. Keep smiling, keep doing what you gotta do, right? We have three more, ooh, we've got two more. I know, last and final, one more. Take an inhale, own your strength, exhale, that's it. As you are, roll over onto your stomach. Make a quick little pillow for the forehead and then glue it down. Right leg's gonna lift away from the mat. And then you're gonna put it right back down. Again, you're gonna lift it away from the mat and put it right back down. Last and final time, lift away, keep away. Without dropping the knee, bend the knee and then straighten your leg. Ooh, this is for your hamstrings. Why not give them an opportunity to get stronger? That's it, last and final one. Straighten the leg all the way out, keep it out. Now pulse that leg up. This is your end, eight, seven, six, five. Both of my hips are anchored. Yes, my abs are still pulling in and up. Hamstring is on fire in a good way. Last two, last and final one. Lower all the way down, same deal, other side. Go on, lift that leg up and then lower the leg down. Now when the leg comes down, it's just to a hover, y'all. Y'all know what we're doing, we're empowering that leg to have strength. That's it, show me the last three. Last two. Last and final one, now lift that leg, hold it up there, I want you to bend that knee. And then extend the leg, that's it. Bend, and then extend, last and final time, bend. And extend, hold it up there, go ahead, pulse it up. Yes, pulsing from the hamstring. That's where the strength is at. You got three, you got two. You got one, you're gonna lower the leg all the way down. Friends, press yourself back to a nice little seated position. Your legs are cooked. Thanks so much for joining me. 10 minutes, not a lot of time, but a whole lot of action can happen. Until the next time. It has been a long year. Yeah, where it's been anything but normal. Well, now there's hope, the COVID vaccines. I know, I know, it's been a little confusing. Like really confusing. So. It's more important than ever to make a plan. Visit planyourvaccine.com to find out where and when to get your vaccine. What are you waiting for? 
Roll up your sleeves and plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. Plan your vaccine. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Does the White House think they have an Afghanistan problem or a COVID problem? Do you believe the abortion issue should reflect the will of the people or the will of the elected officials? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. What's up, fam? It's your girl, Marcia. I'm here from Obey Fitness. We have five minutes, you guys, to hit it and get it in a cute little stretch. Roll out your magic carpet, and that's it. Let's take a seat. Once you're seated, I want you to open your legs up as wide as they'll go for you today, right? No pressure, just as wide as they'll go. Just make sure that all 10 toes are up towards the ceiling and your knees are also looking up at the ceiling. Lift yourself up into the letter T. T is for tall, so let's make it happen. And then I want you to go on over to your left side. Start there and then put the arm in the ear so that they're one. And then let gravity do what gravity does and own it with your reach. So my reach is going over, over, over. Again, you're going with where your reach is gonna take you, okay? And wherever that is, again, gravity's got your back. It's working with you to get you a little bit further, further, further. Now, if it's available to you, take this bottom arm, thread it underneath. Right, so now it's gonna reach in the opposite direction and that's gonna deepen the stretch on your side body. We got one more breath here. Great, and then as you exhale, we're bringing everything down the center. So I'm pivoting my body towards my leg. You're gonna grab wherever you can grab. If it's your ankle, if it's your calf, if it's your knee, you go where you can go. Double check that this little hip over here stays down though, cause it might wanna misbehave and pop up. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, I want you to pull the elbows down towards your mat and pull your heart forward. Hold it there, three, holding two, holding one, and then lower your nose down towards your knee, your forehead towards your shin, crown your head's gonna reach towards the ground. We got one more breath here, and then I simply want you to roll on up to sit. Other side, find your letter T, start tall, and then go over there, right? So I pull my arm and my ear together, and I'm reaching for my right side, and I'm going, and I'm going, and I'm going as far as I can go. And when I get there, trust, I'm still reaching to go a little bit further than that right? Not because I'm ungrateful, but because I know the possibility. If you keep reaching, honey, things are going to happen for you. Now take this bottom arm, reach it in opposition, right? If that's not available to you, keep that bottom arm exactly where it was. Yep, you're deepening that stretch. Hold it here. Hold it here. Amazing. And then you're going to pivot down towards this leg. Now once you get down here, again, check on this misbehaving hip. It wants to pop away from the floor. You see that? You got to square it back and down. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, the elbows come down towards the mat, and I'm going to pull my heart forward. That's going to deepen the stretch across the backside of the legs. It's also getting into a little bit of this back body, which is great after sitting all day. Oh, what a sweet release. And then lower your nose, your forehead, the crown of your head all towards the ground. And then you're going to roll yourself right on back up. Walk those hands down the center. Now you're going to walk as far as you can go. All right, once the knees are still looking up at the ceiling, right, and the toes are still looking up at the ceiling, then you're in the realm of the reasonable. If the things start to roll down, you're gonna wanna back it up just a little bit. And if you want, you can always, you know, prop it up. This is a great way to watch TV. Can we talk? <laughs> now, if it's available to you, I want you to press your hands into your legs, and that's gonna help them to stretch even a little deeper and lower your heart down towards the floor. Take an inhale, take an exhale, roll it all the way up. I want you to bounce those legs closed. Now, as you are, you're gonna cross your legs. And then your right leg is coming over the left leg. Both cheeks firmly on the mat. I'm sitting up nice and tall. You can either grab your leg and twist into it or take your arm to the opposite side and keep going a little bit deeper. Now, I'm not just twisting and slouching. I'm twisting and lifting. That's the key. Keep it going. Amazing. And then come out of this. We're switching sides. Opposite leg crosses over. 
Now, whatever you did on the first side, do that on the second side because you know the goal is always balance. So with me, I'm gonna take my elbow right back to where it was. I'm gonna lift and I'm going to twist. And you know, it's a different side of the same body and I might not get the same result. And that is a-okay, right? Because my other side is doing its best, honey. And that is good for me. Keep lifting. Amazing, we're bringing it back to the center. I want you to cross these legs. Come on over into a quadruped position. You're gonna tuck your toes, pike your hips up into a downward facing dog. And then walk those toes together. I want you to lift the heels. And as you lower the heels, you're gonna lift your abs. Again, lift the heels, lower the heels and lift the abs. Keep pressing those palms firmly, firmly into the mat. One more time. Lower all the way down, then you're gonna walk your fingertips all the way back towards your toes. And just saying, hang here like a rag doll, right? Now, if it's available, you can grab your opposite elbows. If that makes you feel crazy, keep your hands on your shins or on the floor so you can feel stable. And then we'll just rock back and forth from side to side. And then releasing those fingertips, you're gonna roll up through your spine, stacking those bones one on top of the other until you make it up so that you're standing up nice and tall. And friends, please stay this tall until we see each other again. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to our today all day special, Come With Us, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm Tom Yamas. This year, we're highlighting and honoring the heritage, influence, and cultural contributions of the Latino community all around the U.S. Come with us as we share inspiring stories of trailblazers and rising voices within the Latino community, breaking barriers in business, beauty, art, and education. Let's begin with a look at how the pandemic has impacted Hispanic businesses. The Latino business boom was the business story of 2019, then COVID-19 hit. Hispanic Americans four times more likely to be hospitalized as their white counterparts. Nearly a third of Latino small businesses took a major hit. It's been a tough time for so many, but as Morgan Radford shows us, there are growing signs that the Hispanic community may be coming back stronger than ever. Let's take a look. From brand new business models to new twists on old traditions. These are the world famous conchas. After a crushing pandemic that cost the Latino community 32% of its businesses, there's new evidence that now Latino-run companies are not just surviving, but thriving. And Sandra Velasquez's pandemic-born brand Nopalera is one of them. The pandemic hit Latinos and Latino businesses especially hard. Were you ever afraid of becoming one of those statistics? I mean, honestly, I just felt like my back was up against the wall already. And I just felt like I didn't have a choice but to figure something out, you know, to like do something and like do it big. A single mother in Brooklyn working two jobs when the pandemic hit, she decided to take a chance. We were on lockdown. We couldn't go anywhere. So I was like, well, I'll just continue to work on my brand. <laughs> All while being a single mom. Yes. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding this. <laughs> in the middle of the pandemic, when the country's facing record unemployment, you are working not one, but two full-time jobs and being a single mother and starting your own company. Yes, and I think it's because I just felt like I had no choice but to create something for myself. That creation is Nopalera, a skincare company featuring soaps and natural botanicals that come from nopales or cactus plants, putting her heritage front and center. What is distinct about your company? I think the most distinct thing is that I overtly put our culture like into the brand, right? Like it's not just a Latina owned brand and you have to kind of Google me to find out. It's loud and proud. There is Spanish copy on all of the boxes. There's a brown woman on the front with like, you know, nopales coming out of her head. So I really did that on purpose. So there would be like no mistakes. You know, people have said, oh, it looks like my mom. And like, I love that comment, you know, when people really see themselves reflected on shelves. And why is that? Why was it so important for you to make sure that Latino identity was really central to your product? Well, to be honest with you, I feel like in this country, we, it's so Eurocentric. We, you know, the mentality here in the United States really celebrates products from Western Europe as being like worthier of higher price tags. And I really wanted to fight this kind of stereotype that Latino products should be cheaper or should be in the bargain bin. I just feel like we have such a beautiful, rich culture and we are totally worthy of the same price tags and our community wants to purchase them. Now, that dream has sprouted from a seed. 
So is there actual cactus in this? Yes, all of these um, have actual cactus. To a success story. So you started making this in your kitchen and now you're here. Yes, here I am in my production studio that I had to find about a month after I launched the brand because I quickly outgrew my kitchen. So now we're up to about 200 independent boutiques nationwide. This product is in 200 stores across the country. Yes, yes. In the 10 years before the pandemic, Hispanic entrepreneurs grew by 34%, faster than any other demographic. Then the COVID crash came and Hispanic families made up nearly a quarter of initial job losses. Here, let me help you. A loss that hit home for Kayla Castaneda. After losing her job as a consultant at the start of the pandemic, she turned to her roots. We joke around and we say, when life gives you lemons, make aguas frescas. We had just lost our jobs. We were home with young kids. Lots of people would not be like, this is the perfect time to start a business. Um, but for us, we just knew that all of our past experiences had been leading us to this moment. She co-founded Agua Bonita, a twist on traditional flavored water known as aguas frescas, and the work of her grandparents picking fruit in the California sun. This was a really important part of starting this business, was wanting to put our culture at the front and center in a modern way, in the same way that we are modern Hispanics, modern Latinas, you know, because that takes on a lot of different shapes for a lot of people. Sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes it's just your grandpa's agua fresca recipe. A recipe for success both she and Velasquez hope will continue for their entire community. The cactus is known to be a very resilient plant. Yes. Is that in any way symbolic given that you started this company in the middle of a global pandemic? A hundred percent. Like our byline is like resil resiliencia es bella sign, like resilience is beauty because the cactus is just, it's more than just the ingredient, you know, that I use in my product. It's really about what it symbolizes and resilience is one of those things that literally you can cut it and you can throw it across the yard and a whole other nopalera plant will grow. And I just feel like that is just, you know, we've always been here, we're always going to be here, and we're always going to continue to grow no matter where you try to put us or throw us. And be resilient in the process. Yes. Resilience no matter the odds. Amazing examples of resilience right there. This year, the global beauty industry was valued at an estimated $511 billion. To make a splash in such a competitive industry, you really have to stand out. Well, Mexican-American social media influencer Yasmin Maya was up for the challenge. Her entrepreneurial dreams became a reality only after years spent away from family, friends, everything that she knew as part of her path to live freely on this side of the U.S.-Mexico border. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin has her inspiring story. Influencer Yasmin Maya has over 3 million followers glued to her makeup and hair tutorials. Hey my beauties, welcome back to my channel. Bienvenidas a nuevo mi canal, yo soy... At 30 years old, the wife and mom with baby number two on the way. Oh, Aww, baby bum. <laughs> is also behind Birdie Lashes, the brand she officially launched last December with foam ink lashes and eyeliner that doubles as adhesive. What makes your lashes so easy? Because I know a lot of people are like, okay, it's another lash and I can't ever put them on myself. Our lashes are vegan, cruelty-free. They're super ultra soft and they're very light. So you're not gonna feel them heavy. You just pop it right on top of the eyeliner and it will stay. How proud are you of yourself? I look back and it's unbelievable. Hi guys. Okay, welcome to my channel. Nine years ago, Yasmin started her YouTube channel, Beauty Bird. She was living alone and in limbo, not in the Southern California town where she was raised, but in her birth country. I'm going actually through a really hard time right now. Walk us through what your childhood was like and what you went through. I was born in Mexico, very poor, like almost homeless. I didn't move here to the United States until I was like a year and three months. I grew up thinking I was part of this country. And it wasn't until I got to high school when my mom got deported that it hit me with the reality that I am actually an illegal immigrant. Yasmin's father, also not a U.S. citizen, was deported shortly after her graduation. I started realizing I'm not going to be able to apply for a job or even go to college and get scholarships. I was in fear of deportation. Then at 18, Yasmin boldly left the only place she had called home, bound for Tijuana. 
hoping to find work until she could return without worry. It's not a life, honestly, to just live in fear. My boyfriend went after me and we ended up getting married. But her husband had to patiently wait for her in the States. Even her parents had legally returned to this side of the border. Yasmin was on her own for three years, waiting on her green card. Every day I would cry. <laughs> So how did you overcome that? I started watching YouTube videos, girls doing makeup, and my mom was like, why don't you give it a try? And I was like, you know what, you're right, I have nothing to lose. Short on cash, Yasmin receives a camera and cosmetics from her mother, but then she accidentally burned off her lashes while heating hot water for the shower. My little tiny eyelashes. I was so sad, and it was like, no, I'm not gonna give up. I went out and bought my first false lashes. That incredible? Yeah. Finally, reuniting with her family in May of 2013, she continued to post and rake in ads and sponsorships, and a new dream emerged. I started seeing more and more people saying, I unfortunately don't know how to apply lashes. She decided to develop an affordable false lash line for every eye shape. Whatever fiesta that you can think of, this is for you. Today, with close to 80,000 units of lashes sold, and a multi-million dollar portfolio across all of her businesses, Yasmin feels her success as a Mexican Latina immigrant is especially poignant at this time. This is Hispanic Heritage Month. What does this month mean to you? What I try to do is use my voice for other people that feel like they need to be quiet or ashamed of like where they're coming from. And so I take this month very serious to try and use it to our advantage and just be heard. Any dream is possible. And we go from one social media sensation to another. Coming up, a TikTok artist making a name for himself by doing portraits in an unlikely place. Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. Is the Delta variant more dangerous to kids, or is it simply more transmissible? Maryland's principal of the year. I serve an amazing group of staff and students. Welcome back. Artist Devon Rodriguez is part of a new generation of Latino artists using social media to get noticed. He's now the most followed artist on TikTok, inspiring millions and selling portraits alongside works from other iconic artists like Andy Warhol. Here's Savannah Sellers with more. This is my favorite thing to do. I always said if I could draw portraits for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. Growing up in the South Bronx and raised by his grandmother, Devon Rodriguez always knew he wanted to be an artist. Tell me how a kid from the South Bronx decides, I want to do art. So I've always been into art my whole entire life, ever since I was like four years old. I just loved to draw. And then when I got to middle school, I was doing graffiti, but I wanted to draw realistic. As a teenager, Devon attended art school, where a teacher inspired his passion for painting portraits. Portraits are so intimate. How did you decide? But that's what you really like to paint. This guy named James Harrington, who was painting his student, he was my painting teacher, so, so I told him, I want to be in your class. Like, it, this student was just sitting there and he was just painting her like an oil and it looked so real. I was like, wow, that's insane. I got into his class and he taught us about oil painting and so we'd always be like drawing people and it, he just inspired me so much that like, I, I knew that's what I wanted to do forever. Year after year, Devon worked hard to perfect his craft practicing by drawing strangers in a place that was familiar to him, the New York City subway. 
So I would just take pictures of people, not ask them or anything, and then just do a full-on oil painting at home. So you start taking <laughs> pictures of people on the subway, and that's basically what these pictures are around yeah. us, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now you've collected all these stories from people. Yeah, yeah. How neat crazy. is that? In yeah. the middle of New York City. I just love the way like they're sitting or like the story it'll tell, you know, like this mom and child, like we were like on the sixth train in the Bronx and she looked so tired and I was like just imagining like her being tired from work or something and then picking up her child. But it wasn't until last year, in the middle of the pandemic, when Devon began posting his subway sketches on social media that people took notice. What made you think, I'm gonna get in the TikTok game? So, during quarantine, everybody was locked up in their homes and bored, and well, I was on Instagram and I was seeing these young kids that were going viral and like living like this big life. So then when I saw TikTok, I was like, okay, maybe this could be the way. I'm gonna go back to the subway and do sketches. People are wearing their masks now, and let's see how that goes. What makes you decide that you're gonna sketch someone? So I try to get like a whole variety of people, like every background, every age group. It's kind of random. Does anyone ever look at you like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you looking at me? Actually all the time, but you know, <laughs> then I'll start to explain to them. And then they're like, oh, really? Like, oh, okay, okay, draw me. What was it like to start sketching people with their masks on? First, it, it makes it much easier <laughs> and faster, which is good, but but I love that I have so many sketches and paintings before COVID on the subway. And I have them with the mask and then it captures that part of history. And then, you know, eventually the mask is going to come off and I'll still be sketching them. And yeah, it's just, it's just cool. It's like a timestamp, you know, in the yeah. drawing. Excuse me, miss. Miss, I did this drawing of you. Devon's drawings went viral. His first post racked up nearly 5 million views. Then his next one, 17 million. Oh my God, no way. <laughs> People would message me like, oh my God, like I watch your videos and it helps me get through my anxiety and depression and they just make me smile. I never thought it would lead to that. What does that feedback mean to you to hear that that's what your videos can do to people? I don't know, it's it's like unbelievable to this day. I like, it's crazy. Like I just do it because I love it. With all his newfound popularity, there's one person who still keeps the 25 year old artist grounded. What does grandma think now? She's like, you're doing something right, but she doesn't fully understand like yeah. social media. And like her friends from church are always like, oh, my grandson loves your grandson. She's like, of oh, my grandson? Like he doesn't even clean his room. Like <laughs> how, is he, how does he have these fans? Today with 19 million followers and counting, Devon is the most followed artist on TikTok. Even recently selling a painting at a prestigious auction for more than $22,000. You're a real artist, but then you're also a social media star. Yeah. How did the two kind of meet for you? I think I got lucky. I didn't like get a lot of attention as a kid. So I just think it pushed me to like, okay, how am I gonna get out there and try everything at my disposal and finally something worked really well. Yeah. And now you are an artist selling at <laughs> auctions with Andy Warhol paintings are sold. <laughs> It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's so crazy. <laughs> like a out of body experience, like mm. I'm watching a movie, you know. What message do you have for someone who might right now be a young kid somewhere who like you was interested in art but didn't know what to do? To keep it going, keep doing what you love. I was like one of the worst neighborhoods in New York. A lot of people would think that it that there's like no escape and you know the chances of making it out is are like kind of slim. But my message is that like it's not impossible and uh, if you keep it going, hopefully one day it could happen for anyone. Before we said goodbye, I just had to ask Devon. Can you sketch me? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. Excuse me, miss, I drew you. <laughs> oh my gosh! You are so talented. <laughs> That's amazing. Devon's future is definitely looking bright. Coming up, we can't celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month without talking about food. Renowned chef and best-selling cookbook author Alfredo Oropesa from Telemundo joins us after the break to make one of his favorite family recipes. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are. <laughs> 
bad guy. Exactly. <laughs> Do you feel like the bad guy in this? Why should they believe you when they, when they know that people are getting in? Has it been worth it to make this trip? Do you feel like you're giving a green light to politicians? How do you explain why your case has become so important? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Future's looking yeah. bright. Are you ready? We're going to do our part to spread the word on the importance of vaccines, so crucial for reopening America. A big day around here, a very special naturalization ceremony. Many of them doctors, nurses, other essential workers. If you are a nurse, thank you. Spring has sprung, guys, and we want to fill this season with some fun and surprises. Yes, this is the face of excitement. Uh, celebrating Earth Day. Let's change the world. Love it! Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Food is such an important part of Latino culture with recipes passed down from generation to generation. Chef Alfredo Oropesa from Telemundo's Hoy Dia joined today to share his family's recipe for tan pequeña quesadillas. Take a look. Buenos dias, Chefo. How are you? <laughs> Buenos dias. I'm great. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Good morning, Savannah, Hora, Craig, Carson, and Dylan. Happy <laughs> Mexican Independence Day. And Aww. as you mentioned, it's also the Hispanic Heritage Month. And it is a pleasure for me to be here with you and telling you about this. This is a very special recipe, you know. It's called... Um, Tan pequeña, and it reminds me of my grandmother. Oh. Mm. Uh, what so is tan pequeña? Uh, okay, I, I will show you what is tan pequeña. In order to get a tan pequeña, you need to start with a beef tenderloin, okay? Yeah. And then, I'm gonna show you step by step. It's really, really easy, okay? You have a, um, a beef tenderloin, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on, a, um, on its side in a cutting board, and we're gonna make a small cut, okay? Very just like good. this, probably it's like half an inch. Okay. okay, and then you, you just need to keep on rolling all the oh. way down. Uh -huh. What we're looking forward to obtain is, I mean, it's like a big, big strip. Oh, wow. And this way, oh, I love you will you. get... And that must be so okay. tender. Look at that. And a yeah. good knife. Oh, it, yeah. will, it will melt in your mouth. Oh. It's really, really tender. Mm. Now, this is what we call a tan pequeña, and it was pretty easy. Right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Let's go to the next step. Let's okay. go to the next step. I'm going to make a marinade, which is also, I mean, it's so easy. It's so easy. You just need three ingredients. I'm going to start with um, avocado oil. But of Ooh. course, you can use olive oil or, um, yeah, I'll stay either with avocado or salt. olive oil. Okay. I'm going to add just a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Of salt, sorry. Oregano. I'm using dried oregano, but if you can um, add <coughs> fresh oregano, oh, it oh, will be better. much, much How better. Now, I'm going to go with the black pepper, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use this oil or this flavored oil in order to cover. Oh, you just press it. Oh, okay. Or, <laughs> I mean, my wife likes it better with the cauliflower. So you yeah, can use the same marinade oh, either wow, for a cauliflower I'll okay. go for the steak. I like avocado. Or for yeah. the tempicana. Okay. 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 This looks good, right? Mm, yes. Mm. Oh, oh, Are you, you going to grill that or, or put it in a pan? No, I'm going to grill it. Okay. Of course, oh, it, the grill has to be like uh, preheated. Oh, oh, I can hear that. Oh, that's music, right? Yeah, it is. Now I'm going to add the oil on the other side. That should beat outcast. Hey, yeah, that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that you just cook it like for <laughs> probably two minutes, not we, more than two minutes. Chef, we've, got about 60, we've got about 60 seconds left. Can you show us the, the other part of the recipe really fast? Sure, really fast. I will go with it. Okay. Um, I will convert the tan pequeña into strips, mm -hmm. just like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use it to make um, synchronizada, which I think will work great for uh, 
tonight's game, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I'm going to cover oh, it. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Make sure to flip it now when it's sense. a little bit golden. Mm. Is that then flour or corn? Uh, Another night. These are flour, but you can make it either with flour or corn. Mm. Both will like work. Flour. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, people, I think that yeah. will yeah. like it oh, better oh, with yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, flour. Yeah, yeah. Looks awesome. You put any cheese like on this? that? I'm gonna cut it in quarters. Is that crazy? Excuse me. Any cheese or no? Yeah, I covered the tortilla with cheese. Oh, when it was melted, then I add the strips. There you go. And Beautiful. Of course, Take a bite. Oh. We will add a little bit of. Guacamole. Oh, 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 please take a bite. Chef please take a bite. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I think that might be my Come to the studio food. next time. Oh. Chef O, gracias. The friendliest television chef I've ever seen. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you to Chef O. Coming up next, two moms who are shaking up the publishing world. Stay with us. Hey everybody, it's Hoda Kotb from the Today Show. I am so, so excited to tell you about my new podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. I sit down with some incredible people and we'll hear some uplifting stories. Listen to Making Space now on Apple Podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Good morning, welcome to you today. Nice to have you with us. We wanted to surprise Ellie and make her wish come true. What do you think about coming to visit us? Yes. There's only one thing that people are saying. Like, you are <laughs> 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 News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. It was a wealthy, idyllic town forced to confront racism. But when the school board presented its plan, it ignited a national firestorm. Critical race theory. Racism in reverse. The false narrative. Shame. This is South Lake. All episodes available now. Finally, we end on a story that is close to my heart. Did you know only 6% of children's books feature Latino characters? Meet Patty Rodriguez and Adriana Stein, two powerhouse women working to change that. Together they started Lil Libros, a publishing company for bilingual children's books, celebrating the Latino American experience. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. As new moms, Patty Rodriguez and Adriana Stein had the idea of creating children's books based on their upbringings. It was really important to create not just bilingual books, but books that celebrated the duality of being an American Latino in this country. It was even more important to them as first-generation Mexican-American parents to stay tied to their Latino culture. It's important for children to be able to see themselves in these books. What was that? Su mejor amiga. Su mejor amiga. Uh -huh. While traditional publishers told them that there wasn't a market for books like this, it got them all the more excited about the idea. Well, you're wrong because I am a mother that has a baby at home that wants these books and I will find a way to make this happen. Patty and Adriana had previously tried a few other ventures together as an entrepreneurial duo. Restaurants, we tried t-shirt companies, we tried uh, online website, you know, website, a hot dog business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in 2014, Patty and Adriana launched Lil Libros, their own bilingual children's book publishing company, starting with three titles. To be able to create books that celebrate the Latino American experience and be the home for authors and illustrators that were often overlooked is our two biggest missions. Their marketing approach to selling books, go where the people are. A taco event, we're there. It's A food festival, we're there. Any uh, where our customers are. We always followed our customers. That strategy paid off. In six years, Lil Libros has sold more than 1.5 million books and was offered in Target and Barnes & Noble, even climbing to the number one spot on Amazon. To this day, seeing these books there, it is surreal. But at the same time, is we are shoppers at Target. We are shoppers at Barnes & Noble. We shop at Amazon. So most definitely, we deserve to be there as well as, as vendors. Now with 43 titles in their publishing repertoire, Little Libros was ready to expand its operation. We can build 
our own ecosystem and thrive. Instead of finding a venture capitalist or financial institution to give them money, they took a different route. You're not buying a product. You are investing in your part owner of Little Libros. Their solution? Equity crowdfunding announced to the public via social media. It was a win-win for everybody because the majority of the people that are investing in our company are first-time investors. After less than 24 hours of their initial post, Patty and Adiana raised nearly $1 million, mostly from members of their community. And as of today, that number is more than $2.5 million. The average buy-in, about $370. We have over 6,000 investors, and the majority of them are first-time investors. And you have folks using the word investment, using generational wealth. Now that there's an army behind Little Libros that is going to help us grow. And our growth is their growth as well. Two women making the American dream for many Latinos in their community a reality. Now it's we grow, you grow with us. Patty and Ariana are continuing to crowdfund for Little Libros. Their plan is to invest back into the community and create even more books and products. Thank you so much for coming along with us as we celebrate Latino community in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. And the celebration doesn't end here. You'll find more Hispanic Heritage Month stories all across our platforms of NBC. I'm Tom Yamas. Thank you so much for watching. Folks, we are so happy to find you again, tuning into our favorite streaming channel, Today All Day. We are here in Studio 1A. We're happy that you're watching Today in 30. We got another packed half hour, so let's get things started. All right, let's go. First, we're going to start with the countdown to the shutdown, set to begin at the end of the day tomorrow. We're going to have the very latest on that heated fight in Washington over whether the government stays open. Yeah, then we're going to take you inside the high-stakes hearing in Britney Spears' battle to win back control of her life and her career. Plus, we had a 